first things first, like what, let's, let's talk about what we're going to cover today. All right. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I prepared a short, quick, quick enough presentation. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly without trying to go into rabbit holes. You guys can feel free to ask questions after the fact. After that, um, Patrick and I, Pat will give his commentary. We'll kind of chat about it maybe for a second. Um, or we, we may just go right into the questions, but either way, we're going to go right into the questions after that. Um, the goal here is you guys, you guys are the focus here. Okay. So I want to make sure that you guys get the help, um, that you need and you get the questions you need answered. Okay. Workshop for art startups. You are an art startup if you just started your business, have sold less than 5,000 or so of art combined offline and online in the last year, or you're just struggling to get traction. I, I said in my post, guys, whether you've sold less than 10 pieces, I'm just, don't, don't get hung up on any of these things here. It's basically, if, you, if you've really just gotten started out and you're struggling to get traction and uh, uh, you, know, you, you haven't sold that much in the last year, then you're, you're basically like, you're still just starting out. So this will apply to you. I know there's a lot of other people that are on here too that wanted to join that, that are a little bit past this stage perhaps. So I may say something that, uh, that you know, uh, applies to them, but mainly this is gonna be for people that are in this stage. We will probably do something else for people at uh, other stages after this. So let's get started. Okay, the principles. Uh, you are a startup business, all right? And I say that in quotes because I often hear people say, you know, they, you think of yourself as an artist or a photographer or maybe a starving artist. It's a term that really bothers me. I won't go into that. But I want to make the point that, that the, same, the same principles that apply to startup companies apply to you, all right? So when starting out, your only goal is to get traction somewhere, anywhere, all right? And you don't get to tell the market what it wants. The market is gonna decide what it wants and you have to listen to it very closely. And what I mean by that is, you might go out you know, with your subject matter and you might try to sell it and you might be like, oh gosh, I really hope that this content you know, works. I really wanna sell this. And, uh, and then you find out that, that the market actually wants something else. The market does not care about what you want. It's, it's unfortunate, it's sad, but it is what it is. The market decide, decides what it wants and you just really have to listen to it. And uh, when I work with a lot of you, I'm going to be deconstructing as much as I can about where you're having any traction at all so we can figure out where that is and try to uh, pour some gasoline on it. So it's not a time to be picky when you're in the startup phase about what you're willing to do or not willing to do. Sometimes I talk to people and they're like, well, I'm not gonna do shows. I'm just not going to do them. And I sit here and, I, and I'm scratching my head and I'm going, oh my gosh, have you ever ran a startup company? Well, obviously, no, you haven't. But if you've ever been in, a, in the startup world, if you've ever been in that position, you realize that you cannot be picky about what you're willing to do or not willing to do. You have to do everything. Now, here's an important point because a lot of people think about it. They go, I, don't, I just don't want to be in the business of you know, lugging myself around to shows all year long or doing X, Y, or Z. It doesn't matter what it is, but they might be picky about something. And, and what I say back is that doesn't matter. You, you can, you, if you do a couple of shows to figure out your business, you can hire somebody to do those shows for you. Okay. You can hire an intern at a local college, you know, for $10 an hour or $12 an hour to do that show for you. But you might get more sales in that one day and more qualified leads than you did in the last year, you know? And so you have to decide whether you want to do it or not. But you're, at this stage as a startup, you're not committing to anything yet. You're not making a commitment for the next 10 years to do any one particular thing, right? You're just literally trying to figure out where you can get traction and where you can get feedback and, and figure out what the next steps are. So the next thing is to look for an advantage or an arbitrage, right? An example of this is if you live in Austin, Texas, then you know, if you are, a, let's say you're a photographer in Austin, Texas, or you're a painter in Austin, Texas, you have a, your local advantage is that you know the imagery, you know the times of day, the lights, the angles, you know, you know what the secret spots are. You, you, you have an advantage by living here that every other photographer in the, or artist in the country does not have. 
I'm giving that as one example, but look for an advantage or an arbitrage always. It's gonna make the world smaller for you. You just need to get your product in front of the right people, okay? And generate qualified leads, the number one metric, and make sales, right? In order to generate qualified leads, you have to just generate leads. So again, if I give the example of, of uh, getting out in person and doing some shows or going to a farmer's market or whatever it is to get out in person, you're, you're obviously hoping to make sales. You want to make sales, number one, but you have to collect leads. You're going to collect somewhere between 20, 30, sometimes more times the, uh, the amount of leads than you will sales. It's kind of crazy. If you do five to 10 sales at a show, you might get 100 emails, 100 leads from that show. And of that, 70 to 80% of them might actually be qualified. And why that's so important is you got to fill up your sales funnel, right? You, you, you guys are all operating a real business with a sales funnel. You put the leads through the top and some sales come out the bottom. The, pro, the, the reason that lead generation is so important for every business is because nobody is just ready to buy right on the spot. That applies to almost any company. Like, remember Art Storefronts, I'm going to guess that at some point we got your email address before you became a member and you subscribed to our blog right? Or you subscribe to our podcast. That's lead generation. And then eventually you put in a demo request. Like it takes a lot of time, right? So it all starts out with beginning the relationship on the simplest level. And then maybe sometime down the road, if it's a good fit, you might buy. So you have to make sure that you're generating qualified leads. Okay. Now, if you are, if you are doing something and you make a few sales and you're generating some leads, you're starting to get traction. That's, that's a really, really good thing. That's what you're looking for. So never forget the importance of collecting leads everywhere. This is one of the biggest mistakes I have found. It's a pattern. Um, I've, I've actually just recorded a separate video on this because it's really kind of blown my mind. But with all the different um, photographers and artists that we're advising here and talking to, I have noticed that whether it's on their website with the lead capture tool or whether it's at art shows or whether it's anywhere in person, people are not thinking about collecting leads. This is a very important business principle. Everyone's making this mistake or 90% of the people are making this mistake. What I mean is they might be making sales at a co-op gallery, but they're not collecting leads there, even though they can. They're, they're making sales at art shows, but they're not collecting leads. So you're just, you're leaving so much on the table and you're not giving yourself the building blocks to grow. Okay. So the digital approach to, to uh, generating qualified leads and starting to get traction. Um, so when you're starting from scratch, trying to find traction digitally can work, but just know it usually takes much longer than getting out in person. All right, be ready for the long haul. So I'm speaking to those of you who are literally just starting out and uh, you're hoping that you can just sit behind a computer and you know, uh, turn a few knobs and do a few things. And you're going to learn all the lessons about your niche. You're going to learn all the lessons about the demographics of your customer and you're going to learn everything and you're going to be able to scale it. And just, you know, the sky's the limit. That is going to take a long time and be very hard. You will learn more by getting out in person in one day than you pro if you've been at this for a bit, you will learn more than you probably have in a year of sitting behind your computer. There's just something to it. Now, why do I say this? This is just a principle in startups, in building startup companies, right? You get out in person, you talk to people, you ask them questions. Hey, why did you like this image? Where, you know, what, 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 why do you connect with the subject matter? Why do you like it? You observe people as they come to your booth without even saying anything sometimes. And you notice that people are just going towards one piece of content or one style of content. That's, that's the market telling you that something is resonating. And so when you're also at this point, when you're starting out, you want to have a very aggressive mentality, guys. And I'm saying, i.e., do a ton of creative giveaways. The giveaways, as you know, are a great way of generating leads. And some people have asked me, like, well, they generate a lot of vanity leads too, you know, like not qualified leads. And I said, yes, but if they, if, if they generate 10 qualified leads and let's say 90, you know, general leads, I want to ask you, how many qualified leads did you get last week, Right. And, and what was the ROI on this giveaway for what you got for it? So what matters is the fact that you got the 10 qualified leads, not the 90. And I'm just coming up with those numbers out of the blue. That, I'm not saying that those are, those are accurate. I think they're actually much higher. Um, 
But don't worry about making huge profits at this point, guys. This is all a marketing expense. Normally, it costs money to acquire leads and customers. If you can break even or make a little profit early on and your list is growing, you are actually winning, okay? So this is an important point. So when you're doing giveaways or you're, you're doing that type of stuff and it's really early, of course you don't wanna be losing money, right? You wanna make a little bit of money. But I just wanna make this point because acquiring customers usually costs money. And so you take your giveaway and you, you, and you divide it by the number of leads that you generated and that's your cost per lead, right? So like, or, or cost per sale if you divide it by the number of customers. That's your customer acquisition cost, otherwise known as CAC, okay? But when you are early on, you want to be just really aggressive. Like be aggressive with price, be aggressive with the giveaway. Don't hold back, you're just trying to get traction. Okay, you're not trying to build and scale the business yet. So you have a serious advantage that you should use, and I just wanna make sure you guys are aware of this. Your cost on a print is so little, yet you can give it away with a big price tag. Um, or if you're a painter and you have originals stacked up in your garage or somewhere, use those. They are huge leverage. Like if you have an original painting that you normally would charge a thousand or $1,500 for, and these things are collecting dust for years, give away one of those. Because if you do a giveaway for a thousand dollar piece, think about how much more attention that's going to get and, and the people that's going to attract. Okay. Now, when I talk about the prints for the rest of you that are giving away prints, you're like, you can buy a, uh, a paper print. I think there's a huge advantage on like fine art paper prints. Um, your cost is so low and you can mark them up so high and like you, you can get creative with how you do that but it costs you so little that you can get, you could do some really big ones um, and just kind of get crazy with it. Like maybe you have a big one that's framed and you know, it costs you, you know, $80, but you've got a, now got a price tag. That's like, this is a $750 piece I'm giving away or a thousand dollar piece. And it gives you that much more leverage on your giveaway. So utilize your advantages. And I believe that the prints, even if you do them in person, even if you, you have some sort of uh, a way of doing a two for one or whatever it is, just realize that you can leverage that and you always want to leverage the things that you have advantages with. The goal here is just to get your art, your name, your product in, in front of as many pe people as possible. And a point here I wanna make is doing a bunch of SEO website work at right here at this time is absolutely the wrong move. You don't know what sells yet, you may need to pivot your business model or your entire website strategy, and that's aside from the fact that in 2020, SEO is gonna provide an extremely low ROI, return on investment, on your time if you get any return at all. Uh, that is a, a subject for a whole nother discussions. SEO is search engine optimization for those of you who don't know. So the digital approach alone may not work for you and your content if you're just starting out, okay? If it doesn't work or you lose your patience, get out in person the most important point I can make. Don't just sit there and, and do social media posts and follow the art marketing calendar and go, it's not working for me. It's not working for me. If you don't have traction and you didn't come in with traction already, you got to do something else. Uh, you, and, and the fastest way is to get out in person, but you got to do something else. You got to try some other methods and we'll get into that too. So the in-person approach, when you're starting from scratch, doing things in person is far easier because of how quickly you can get your product in front of people and you can do it today or this weekend. Now, when I say this, guys, your actual product, there's such a big difference between people seeing your prints in person, like in real life, and the power of that, versus like you just posting it online, right? And oftentimes, as you guys know, most of the time you guys have been posting images of your work and not holding a print or doing a video of the print, you know, close up side views and things like that. So it's, and, and you definitely wanna be doing that because you need to merchandise the product as much as possible so these people know what they're gonna buy and how cool it is. But when you're in person, it's just so much, everybody grasps it right on the spot. And so instantly, as people are walking by, you have leads walking in front of your booth. You've got prospects walking in front of your booth or wherever you're at. And the people that come in, you can actually get them to become leads and they actually see your product, which is amazing. And you can observe them and all of those types of things. So even though it seems like a lot more work to do shows, I, sh I assure you it is not if you calculate the ROI, the return on investment, again, 
on your time spent, right? So the amount of time that you're spending behind the computer, wasting months and months and months of time potentially, if you, you could get on in one day and probably do a show and sell 500 to $1,000, you do, you, know, you do that four times in a month, you're at $4,000 in sales just like that. And now you have the seeds from which to grow your digital business. So there's no faster way to make sales in person than in person, build a qualified lead list, ask questions and get real feedback and find your niche. Learn to love it. This alone will be a massive advantage. And I'll get into that too. If you think you have a niche problem, just get out in person as much as possible and let the market tell you what it wants. You can only solve a niche problem by talking to customers or observing their behavior. Like if 50% or more of your sales come from one specific subject matter. So test everything and run tests often and quickly when you are in this position, all right? I want you guys to try everything that you can um, to generate leads and to get traction. Generate every idea you can, both online and offline, and test them all. Your goal is to get your product in front of people. See if you can gener generate qualified leads or sales. Don't spend a lot of money or time on any one specific thing. No overthinking, no big purchases or commitments, no perfectionist mentality. For example, I was speaking to a photographer and he said, well, I wasn't just ready to go spend $10,000 and have a booth yet. And I said, no, 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 no. You do not go spend $10,000 and get a booth. You go buy a table at Costco for $75 or wherever you can get one used, drape a skirt over it or whatever, get, a, some, get some prints made of what you think your best sellers are, or what your friends and family tell you your best sellers are, and get out in person. But do not make any big purchases or commitments. Just get out there and just do it kind of raw and dirty, all right? Um, we all want the easiest thing to work, right? Usually, usually the easiest thing to do that everyone can do and is doing will not work or will, or it will have a low ROI, right? So what I'm, what I mean here is that sometimes people, you know, they start their business and then they, they had this idea in their mind. They were romanticizing about it like SEO. Like I'm just going to launch this site. I'm just going to do some search engine optimization work and that's it, right? And they get really hung up on it. And when it doesn't work, they get really emotionally beat down. And so when it doesn't work, don't get upset about it. All right, move on and try something else. You got to try other things. Getting emotionally invested in any single tactic is a sure path to misery. And many people will actually just give up because they think they failed. But in reality, this is just normal startup business. This is just the way that it goes. You got to try things. You don't know what's going to work. And what works is going to be different for everyone. And when you find something that works, in other words, you have done something that is generating qualified leads and sales, that's when you focus on it and you double down. I need you guys to appreciate how hard it is to get traction in any startup business from any single marketing channel. And don't allow yourself to get distracted from it, okay? Ask yourself instead, have you fully exploited this channel that is working yet before you deviate and move on to anything else, okay? And in this process, if you can't get traction, you may very well decide to change your subject matter. This is called a pivot in the startup business, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it. Some of our most successful members actually pivoted. Meg Knappenberger, uh, William K. Stidham, two people that, that are uh, some of the biggest sellers on our platform, they both pivoted. So don't feel bad about that either. You may have to pivot. You may not want to, but you may have to pivot and choose a different subject matter where you have an advantage and where you have a, a really solid market. That's, what you, that's, where, that's where you end up if things don't work, right? If you just can't get traction with the subject matter you currently have, that's the last step. You try something else and you fix the problems, right? You, obviously your other content didn't work because there wasn't a market for it and you had no advantage or whatever it was. Now's your chance to pick something that actually works. So I'm giving you guys this example. This is a, this is a brewery, a, one of these ranch brewery properties in Austin, Texas called Treaty Oak Distillery. Um, and it's, it's like probably, I'd say about 20 minutes or so from downtown. It's a beautiful spot. And uh, I was there with my family about three weekends ago, three or four weekends ago. And I took a picture of this. This is my picture. All right. At this place, this brewery distillery had about 500 people there during the day all families, great people, great crowd, you know, uh, definitely like a middle class and up type of a crowd. And there were these booths here, right? So I took a picture of it. And the thing that, that drove me crazy here is that you can see 
this guy was selling a book. This guy was selling like birdhouses. I think this was jewelry. And my wife spent $200 here. These people had, had, had uh, patrons going by their booths all day long because people go to this ranch and they hang out and they kind of spend, you know, three, four or five hours there with other families and friends and things like that. And there's a ton of these in Austin right now. But the, 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 the thing that stood out to me is we're in Austin, Texas. This is not a small city. Why didn't a single artist or photographer have a booth here? I mean, it just blows my mind. There are opportunities here all over the place and they're just being completely overlooked. And I believe, and this was going back to one of the points I was making earlier that I said I would, I would come back to is that if you actually get out there, guys, you're going to have a massive advantage. If you actually get out there, these people are out there hustling, right? And there's not a single competitor uh, that's an artist or a photographer. You could have been the only one. You could have got your eyeballs in front of 500 people at least that day and probably made some sales, had a great time doing it, talking to people, and, and probably got 100 qualified leads on your list. And so I want to encourage you guys to be thinking about this because it's, it's not that hard and you can do this too. These people aren't any more talented than you. They are just getting out there and hustling. All right. Do what the other people are not willing to do and you will have very little competition. Everybody asks me, you know, Hey, there's so many photo landscape photographers on fine art America and, and all these places. Yes, there are stay away from those places. Everywhere where the competition is extremely high, yes, you are right. It is hard to differentiate yourself. So go everywhere else but there. That's where you're going to have the advantage, where you will be the only person in front of 500 people every single weekend, okay? And these places are all over the place. There's farmer's markets in every city, in every neighboring city. There are breweries and properties like this. There are upscale hotels. All of these places are opportunities, okay? While other people are sitting behind a computer waiting for the world to come to them, these people that I just showed you are out there making real sales, talking to real customers, moving their businesses forward, okay? Art shows, local festivals, farmers markets, breweries, wineries, upscale hotels, office buildings, parks, office parks, food truck roundups, wherever. There's tons of places where this stuff is going on every single weekend. You can do it too. You just gotta find them and hustle. There's digital ways to do this too. Although they're not as effective as I mentioned, it's not, it's not as easy when you're not in person, but things like Facebook groups and Instagram influencers. By Instagram influencers, I mean finding people uh, that have a large following on Instagram that might be able to share your work or share your giveaway, right? When you're running a giveaway and if they have qualified people, if you believe qualified people are following them, then those people might just turn into qualified leads for you. And you can do this by you know, giving them an offer. Maybe you pay them $50 or $75, I've heard. Uh, uh, Meg Knappenberger told me in a recent phone call that she paid an Instagram influencer and ended up selling like five limited editions from it. So the opportunities are there. Again, what's gonna work for you is gonna be different for other people, but these are all things that you can do right away to start generating more qualified leads. Next, you guys, I want you to get the help you need to keep moving forward. I do not want you guys stuck, all right? All small businesses, especially startups, hit roadblocks. The only thing that is certain is that you are going to get stuck somewhere. Something is not going to work at some point. This is for every startup in every industry. It always happens, okay? We built art storefronts to get entrepreneurs the help they need to work through their problems and to keep the business moving forward. This is something I dreamed of having when building my own companies over the last 20 years. I've dreamed of having this, guys, and, I'm, and I've built it for you, and we're improving it every day for you so that you as startups have what I never had and what I always needed and what I wanted and what I had to just go pull out of other people, and it was the biggest pain in the world. You're an ASF member, which means you get marketing and business consulting for life, you guys, for life realize what that means. You have experts at your disposal right now. Realize how amazing this is and how much this normally costs. Use it. The only way you are sure to, to lose, sure to not get your money's worth is if you don't use it. Don't be the person who gives up and goes dark when in reality, your business is just stuck on something. There's, you're, you're usually stuck on one thing, guys. And if you, can, if you can verbalize what's going on and we can help you, we will help you. We want to help you, right? So I really want you guys to use it. 
I'm sure you guys can see the passion in my voice. I, it, it pains me to think of anybody out there that is stuck, that is totally stuck somewhere and doesn't know what to do and, and doesn't know what the next move is. And so you got, we got to get you help. So ASF's history in a nutshell here. So we set out to build phenomenal art selling websites, but we discovered that photographers and artists are just a huge group of struggling entrepreneurs that need help. And so fixing broken or struggling art startups is actually the real problem. Guys, you don't have a website problem. You don't have a problem with any tool that you're using, right? You've got, a, you've got marketing and business problems. That's it. That is the whole thing. The reason that you are not, that, that you don't have traction, the reason that you're not getting to the next level that you want to get to is because you have business problems and those business problems have to get worked through. So we put together some key resources for, resources for you um, for uh, after this. I want you guys, if you haven't already, to make sure you've read the ASF member handbook. We recently created this a few weeks ago for all members. Um, and the purpose is to help, you know, explain everything and to make sure that you are thinking about your business and what you should be doing the right way. Um, I want you all to watch my presentation on the number one metric for art businesses. Uh, we've, we've, we've put together a list of ways to generate qualified leads, a master list, which is awesome. So you're, some of you are probably thinking, yeah, but how do I generate more qualified leads? Obviously I talked about some of those ways, but we've put together a list and we, we are building upon it every single day right now. And it's, we're going to continue to just compile this awesome master list for ASF members based on what you guys have told us, what we've learned ourselves, so that it's just one big collaboration of what's been working for everybody. And again, you just got to pick and choose off that list. Just try different things. And hopefully something is going to work for you. When you do anything in person, follow the Art Show Playbook. We will link that in as well. Um, and you can apply the lead capture principles there to everything that you do in person. Listen to our customer calls. This is a new thing that we started doing, specifically the ones with Ron, Judith, and Julie. Um, I think these will resonate with you guys because Patrick and I were advising them on uh, how to think about their business as a startup and what their next moves were. And whenever you get stuck, ask questions and get help in small wins, guys. That's where it begins. It's not a social community. This is the venue we have created that makes it easy for us to help you work on your business. And I say this to any of you that are out there that are like, I do not wanna be on Facebook. I will tell you guys this, I don't wanna be on Facebook either. You probably realize I'm not using a personal Facebook account. I do not use Facebook whatsoever for my personal life or my family or anything. It is a venue just to, to operate you know, the small wins uh, group for this business. So for those of you who don't wanna be on Facebook, awesome, you just use it as a tool as well, the same way that I am, so that you can get all the value from this. Also, we're gonna have this startup workshop, as I mentioned at the beginning, probably once a month, maybe more frequently. Um, and, uh, and instead of having uh, a lot of presentations like this, it's gonna be a lot more discussion with you guys directly. I wanna talk to you, we wanna talk to you. So if your business is stuck or stalled, as you start working on these things and you need help, that means you should attend, okay? Um, stay tuned. The schedule will be released soon. Thank you. Pat, I will stop the share and kick it back to you. You are muted right now. Yeah, thank you. There we so go. I, just, I just took the host back. Um, for those that know how to use Zoom that want to ask a question, I think we're going to just do the raise hand thing. Um, it, you should see it in your, your sort of right hand bar. But if you've got a question, if you raise your hand, it'll show me the raised hand icon. And then we'll just start unmuting you one at a time. Assuming, assuming there's no audio issues, let's, let's just say one, one, one answer, one question, one answer um, to try to give everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're literally raising your hand. I love it. Um, there's, there's a digital one. There's a digital version. Um, it's on, it's over on the right hand sidebar, like click around and you'll see a thing that says raise hand. Do you and want to do the side by side video too of us or is that possible? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, what's on what end or what. Um, I'm just but, seeing you. Yeah. I think, I think you got to just tweak, tweak your views. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into it. Who's, who's ready for the first question or maybe we should just have those. Okay. I got the first one. Well, here. What did you, what, what did you think in general? First off, do you have any comments right off the bat? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it was a lot to digest in one presentation. I think the, the next level of real value is going to come out of the Q&A that we have. I would, I would add to everything that you said, like, you know, we built this business and it's had this iteration where it's like, it started with the website and then you start talking to your customers and you realize, hey, a website's not enough. And so we start getting into the marketing aspects of it. And it's like, hey, you need to demystify and, you know, boil the technical elements out to the best possible. I know that's really hard to do. And then we get there. Now it's like, we need to continue to give as much education and coaching on growing the business as possible. And the part about a startup, like no one says that you're a small business owner, you are a startup and we want you to make the amount of money that you have set out for yourself. And I think another huge and key way that a lot of people don't uh, necessarily think about or, or get hung up on is just one particular revenue source. You know, if you just have originals, you're just selling originals. If it's just prints, you think you're going to just be selling prints. When you want to find as many revenue sources for your business as you can, treat each one as an individual silo and work on growing them all in tandem. But we'll, we'll, we'll get into that more. I'm going to start with the first question. Uh, Steve, you're the first hand that I've seen raised. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Let's see how it works. Uh, Steve, you're good to go. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, great. Thanks. So uh, this has been a, a, a great talk. Um, I've been trying to do this for a long time. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to do this. I really have two questions. One of them, I'm doing a, a trade show in two weeks. And what got me on this call in the first place was, I guess I'm not very good at chatting people up and, and remembering what they are and who they are and what kind of categories I need to do. So is there a resource that says kind of like a checkbox that says, um, I mean, obviously male, female, age are pretty easy. Um, but it seems like I'm having a hard time figuring out ex when I look at the art, um, the store or the front funnel, the sales funnel, mm -hmm. I got stuck on the, who's my customer. Um, even though I have been doing shows for a year or two, but actually more than that, but collecting names, I have 300 names on my mailing list. Good job. Um, General things. <laughs> Generally, I know kind of who they are, and I started going through that list. But with the well, show me, coming me, up, I was hoping is there a better way for me to capture let, that? Let me let me ask you, Steve. Like, I mean, normally when I'm doing this type of stuff, when I'm in this position, I mean, it's really just like very actively observing, right? And like the pattern will emerge. It's not necessarily like you have to be totally um, like scientific about it there should be some sort of a trend. I mean, like, let me ask you, like, do you notice any sort of patterns? Like, like yeah, I, I have, I have, um, I think, um, well, I've, I've noticed because my art is more um, on the sensual side, female form kind of stuff. Um, that's why I was trying to reach out to Bill Stidham because he pivoted off that kind of stuff. But I've noticed, yeah, there's a certain gender, a certain uh, age range and a certain, kind of personality that goes along with it um so i was just wondering if there's a way that i could i mean yes I, that's what i've seen so far i guess there's i guess i'm doing it the right way then by doing shows and just kind of generally writing on the back of the card what i thought of this person the writing on the back of the card is a very great i that's a great tactic i i've, I've been doing that for years so that's a that's a good idea but i think you do have a general idea so pat do you have anything to add yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things. One, you're doing the shows, which is the right idea. Two, you're, you're building up the funnel. But three, you know, I, I get being, being a little timid and not wanting to talk to people, but my goodness, the best part, the best part of having this in-person experience of doing a show is how much feedback you can get. And you don't realize how much feedback you can get when somebody walks away, just when they walk away. Do not let them walk away. So when somebody comes into the store, and I'll tell a very brief story on this because I think it's a, a, a good um, sets a context, but when Nick and I, when Nick and I were younger, we actually had a clothing company together and we ended up meeting this guy outside of a, a, like a fabric warehouse and he ended up working for us and he taught us so many valuable lessons. It's the same. We would drive onto Melrose. Melrose is a street in LA back then, or like all the hottest clothing stores were. We would park right out in front of the other one. He goes, come in guys, let's watch, watch us. We would walk right into the store and he would walk up to every single solitary employee and he goes, show me what's selling the most. Show me what's selling the most in here right now. What is the hottest item? Why do you think it's the hottest item? Who's buying it more? Is it, is, it, is it women buying it for men? Is it men buying it for themselves? What do they say about it? What's getting returned the most? That employee's done over to the next employee. And we would do this for eight hours at all of the various different shops. And you come out of it and you're like, oh my gosh, the amount of feedback I have. So how do you apply it to art? When these people come up to your booth, start the conversation. Oh, you know, start the relationship. Well, what, what caught your eye? particularly 
Was it this piece or that piece? Why? What caught your eye about it? That's interesting. What, what art have you bought in the last six months? Did you buy it or did your wife buy it? And, you know, if, even if they're going to leave and they're not going to give you anything and they're going to walk on, you, you get those extra data points and it's like you turn the ROI of a show and it, it's so much higher uh, in that capacity. And that's a discipline in and of itself, but it's such a fantastic way to learn. And especially, especially early on when you're like, okay, everyone tells me I'm great at art. I've got these amazing pieces, but I'm not getting traction. It's not selling because I, yeah, I haven't found my niche, right? So start asking questions about what they did buy and what's selling and what their wife really likes and why. And what you might stumble upon is some hot new niche that's coming up that you can tailor your art to very, very easily. And so I think, I think that's, that's a big one too. Well, Steve, I, actually, I did. I have a, on my card that they fill out for the giveaway. It says, what caught your eye? So awesome. I'm a, that's, that's very much what you just said, I think. Yeah, so you're doing it. You're doing great. Okay, Steve, I'm going to meet you. Just let, let me give him one more. Steve, yeah. let, me give, let me give Steve one more thing. Um, Steve, a, a, another thing for you is uh, I, I understand that it can be a little like nerve wracking to like question these people, especially if you're a little timid about it. And, but what I'll tell you is the people that are buying from you, you have to ask them first. They're already your customer. When the deal's done, you, you, can, you can ask them, right? And then after that, Focus on the people that are kind of spending a little bit more time than usual in your booth. You don't have to hound people who just walked in there. Some people who look like they're kind of going back and forth from one thing or the other or flipping through a few things, you can talk to them as well. But the other thing too is be yourself. Like, don't be afraid to just be like, hey, you know what? I'm just really trying to, I'd love to ask you guys, I'm really trying to learn like who the people are who like my art because they're, they're always coming in and they're buying it. And like, you know, what do you, I'd love to hear what you like about it or, you know, what's, what, what, what about it you're connecting with, you know? So you just take it, take it like in that type of a way, be, be, be real candid, be yourself. And uh, you're going to learn a ton. Usually people will be like thrilled to help you and help you learn what it is. Okay, good. Next question, Mark, I saw you had your hand up. I'm going to unmute you. You good to go? Yeah. Uh, I don't raise my hand. I didn't know how to uh, raise my hand. That's so. okay. I caught you. I saw you. Oh, we got video. <laughs> video. Nice, so, Mark. Anyway, uh, you guys talk about shows and everything, and I'm a little hesitant uh, of what, because Nick has says, um, my, you know, I've spoken to a lot of my fellow photographers, and they invest in, like, small stuff, and the, you know, little cards and calendars, and, you know, spent almost a thousand dollars to do this show, and then if they don't sell it, then they're out with all the stuff sitting in their basement, so I'm a little hesitant doing that. So, I've been doing uh, four venues. I've, I've done four galleries, one of which uh, being accepted to the Minnesota State Fair, a very prestigious uh, 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 photography venue. Congrats. And I've gotten zero, no inquiries, nothing. So maybe I'm, this is telling me that galleries don't work. So maybe I'm, I, I gotta force myself to do shows. I, I don't know, I, but you know, then I got to mount all these little pictures on uh, foam core, and get a whole inventory. And I'm a little well, what, what kind of, what kind of work do you do? Uh, landscape photography. So, okay. Uh, well, uh, yeah. I mean, I just took this one. This was just an underwater shot. But okay. I, you know, I mean, it's just a, I'm, you know, it's nothing big, but you know, it's just a little. So, so where have you sold before? I haven't, you know, I, no, I, I've given away out. most of my work, actually. So, so, I, away, I mean, that went really quick, but. Okay, so uh, the gap, like, we all know that, okay, so, like, this is a perfect, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, because the galleries didn't work, but we know that galleries work in general, but, like, that just didn't work for you, right? Like, right. some things work for some people, some things don't work for others. It's also depends on the gallery, the location, and all that stuff. So it's okay, the, le the qualified leads or whatever, if they even had any that were going in there, who knows, they might not be getting a lot of traffic, I don't really know. Um, or you might've been in like a really bad location within the gallery, who knows what it could be, but the bottom line is, it didn't work. So when it comes to the doing uh, an art, fair, art show or something else in person, like a farmer's market, like all these different types of things, I see them around. Um, there's, I was just telling Pat yesterday, I, I have to say it because I showed the brewery on the presentation. There's another place here in Austin called the Galleria in Lakeway. And I know there's some people in Austin on this call. So they have a farmer's market literally every weekend. And there's all these booths there. And, um, and it's a classy spot. Like this is like a, a nice shopping center, right? I mean, there's, there's $3 million homes within a mile of this place, okay? And again, there's all the booth. There's, there's you know, the farmers that are there. And then there's, there's some artisans and then there's like a, 
there was like a, a popcorn stand, right? And they all, everybody there kind of had these just kind of like dirty tables and a little tent that you could buy on Amazon. And, and that was it for the most part. And so I was like, I can't believe this. There's, there's a band playing. There's all these families there, tons of people walking around. So I went and I looked it up and, I, and online and it cost $40 to go to this place. And yet there wasn't a single artist or photographer there, right? So what I would say is when you're thinking about going in person, dip your toe in. Find a way to dip your toe in, right? If you got to buy like all uh, photo luster paper prints because they're, they're really cheap, you know? You can buy those things really cheap. You can also buy economy canvas. You can buy the economy metal from Graphic Dimensions. Don't worry about it. You're not going to ruin your brand. You're in the very beginning. You haven't sold anything yet. You could get these things way cheaper, you know, and then and just test it. It's just a test, right? Can you go there and then be aggressive with your offering? Like, hey, at this show, I'm offering 30% off. So raise your prices up, but make it seem like you're giving them a deal for being at that show. You know what I mean? And so don't spend a thousand dollars, just spend, look at what you can do and just kind of hack your way and spend the least amount that you can to have something and walk away from it. And with the goal of being break even or a little bit ahead, but to leave with a bunch of leads and, uh, um, and, and a lot of information, you know, and learnings from, from what happened there. Like some weird things happen sometimes. Sometimes people like only the metal prints sell with some, some people's content. It's like, whoa, why did that happen? It's like, I can't explain it. 20 prints sold on metal and then one sold on canvas. I guess like metal really resonates with my imagery. And so then you'll go to the next show and you'll come with all metal or 90% metal and then your sales double or triple, right? So you just got to figure out a way to dip your toe in for the least investment possible. That goes for any tactic. Okay, so just elaborating, if you guys are pushing shows and all that, do you guys have any way of the best way to set up a booth and make it look nice instead of just I mean, do you really suggest just a table from Costco, a white uh, tablecloth and just spreading your artwork out? I mean, that I, I'm really? very, look I, as an <laughs> okay. entrepreneur, I am very like I've started six companies. Okay. And, um, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I will, uh, Pat will, will criticize this a little bit because he tends to be a lot more quality oriented. I'm like, ship it, ship it, ship it, ship it. Right. Which just means, Look, I, I've learned enough to know that when you do one thing, you can't ruin your brand. You can't, you, you can't do anything wrong, right? Like, so look the best you can. It's up to you. But if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can make yourself look pretty good without spending a lot of money. Um, we do have resources for this. We've got an art show playbook that has all sorts of stuff in it. And there was, it, it should link to um, a post in the Small Wins group where everybody kind of collaborated and was posting pictures of their booths um, and stuff like that. And so you, and, and they were talking about like what booths they bought, like what the brand names were. And, and I think that would be pretty helpful for you. But I think the more, the, the important point I want to say is we're put like, it sounds like we're pushing shows. We're actually pushing just getting out in person, right? Like when you, when I started art storefronts, I went and I got in front of photographers, right? I didn't sit online and just throw up some ads. I went to real, like well-known photographers and I sat down and I said, I want you to look at this. Tell me what you think about this website. Would you buy this? Will you put a down payment for it? Because I don't want to start this company unless you would, right? And I got 20 of those people to actually say, I will buy it right now. And I said, I'll give you the best deal ever for your life, right? Like you pay me $50 for this right now or a hundred dollars. And I forget what it was. And I will give you a license and you'll be good to go. And that's where I went, wow, there's a real problem here. You see what I mean? It's just hard. It's hard to not do. It's, it's so much harder to do when you are not in person. So you're just going to get way more feedback. So don't, har I, I don't want to harp on the shows. The shows happen to be a good way, but it's just getting in person like the brewery, right? It's just, that's just like as dirty as it comes. That lady on the end, if you remember, where my wife spent two hundred dollars, she's at a table. That's all she had. So yeah, I would I would say a couple of things. And thanks for the question. I unmuted you, Dana. You're going to be next. I would say one: when you're you know like big shiny booth or just a table, if you can find the opportunities where there are cheaper shows. You know, I I see Stan in the groups. Like a lot of people are saying, like you know, my local art there is two thousand bucks. So you have to find some of the the, the more fringe ones that are cheaper and don't cost as much and it's like if you spend 40 bucks or 50 bucks or 100 bucks you go down there with some prints maybe they're going to work maybe they're not going to work attempt a fire sale them at the end gather as many contacts you can 
it's, it's just a really high revenue opportunity. And especially when you find like the cheaper under the radar uh, and Ron O is saying using festivalnet.com. I know that's one as well, but all it takes is just going around your local community, seeing where somebody has a, a booth set up for whatever it is and saying, Hey, can I get in here and get in there? And look, if you don't want to be on your feet for eight hours, go for two, go for two fire sale, everything you have at the very end of it. Well, you know, you don't like it for that price. What would you take it for? Because it might just be saying, you know, this particular subject material that you're using here is not working and is not great. Yeah, for, or buy one, get one free. Yeah. Okay, going to Dana. Dana, Dana. over to you. You're unmuted. Hey, how you doing? Thanks, uh, you guys, for putting this hey, together. I appreciate it. Um, and and I'm, I'm kind of a classic example of exactly what you guys were addressing today. I, I think I uh, climbed on the platform probably a year ago went whole hog, did the whole Facebook, Instagram um, giveaway thing, and it flopped. And I basically, it's been idle ever since then. So um, I'm definitely guilty of, you know, not going down the show path, kind of resisting it for the financial reasons, much like everybody else. I think, you know, just my work, the way I want to present it tends to be expensive. And so um, it's making that initial investment in the show inventory that, that uh, has had me struggling. But, you know, again, between this and, um, and your, your metric video, which I actually watched this morning, um, between the two of those, I, I, got, I now have a sense of, you know, wh what I need to do next to kind of move things forward. But really my main question was, so thanks for everything. My main question is, where can we um, access the assets that you talked about, the new handbook and the, the lead generation uh, list? Pat, where will those be? Will those just go on a, in the vault? I yeah, mean, I we, imagine. Will, we will post it on the same thread and we'll make sure that you guys all see it for and sure. But it'll, it'll we'll, live somewhere. We'll email it too. And we'll email it too after this thing's over. Yeah, we'll email oh, it. Perfect. All yeah. right. Uh, Thanks, okay. guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to keep moving. Okay. Uh, Isan, you're next. And I hope I said that right. You should be unmuted now. Go ahead. Patrick, Nick, thanks so much. Um, I can see your enthusiasm. I can see your passion. I am fully inspired by what you guys are saying. Bless your hearts, really, really. It's just amazing to see uh, this amazing support group and all our ideas over here. I really, really appreciate what you're doing. That's awesome. You're so welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, so, uh, just a small little, I have two questions that come to my, my mind and as I'm thinking and I'm seeing. First of all, this is amazing. This is what you guys are doing. Hopefully, I see this happening more and more, if that time for, uh, permit. Uh, this is very inspiring. This really, really means that you guys care about us and you really want us to succeed, and I appreciate that. Um, I personally, I create artwork to inspire global peace, and for the last 17 years, I've been working on making a half an acre size of a painting made of 2,000 paintings. And I've been on this production side. I'm in Orange County, San Luis Orange County, and right now, uh, there's a park here. The city is very interested to do this whole installation. There's Irvine, over Irvine Great Park or what? Um, Irvine Great Park. Yes. Do you aware of it? Yeah, I, I, I live in Orange County too. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And I'm from Orange County originally. Yeah. So wonderful. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. I started this whole project uh, in 2003, 9/11. All of this happened. I was just moved. You know what? Oneness. We are one people. Unity is the answer. And I created all of these flags and abstract faces made of 2000 when they come together you will see a gigantic peace symbol uh, and love and unity through there now the two things that's going on in my mind just going to make it short i have an art studio i have some benefactor that helped me spent over half a million and now i am kind of didn't work out now i'm taking care of, of everything myself and we never ended up doing any marketing we spent so much money in production capturing imaging I'm like over almost thousands of paintings that have been fine art captured, but we never spent. For the last year, I started doing marketing. I'll find you guys over the summer, and I just fell in love with the website, everything that is support. Now, uh, the website, I have a shopping cart, um, and I'm working full time. Family business, constructions, morning to night, just to pay the bills. That's where I am. Two questions. One question. Where do I start? Busy schedule, how, what do you recommend? And the next thing is, I have this beautiful setup in my art studio, it's a kind of a gallery as well. And this, there's a story, and I would love, and there's a lot of people with money around here. Laguna Niguel, Laguna Beach, Newport Beach. Uh, Where all, exactly are you? I'm in Laguna Niguel. We're in Laguna Niguel, okay. Off of, yeah, off of Crown Valley, okay. Yes, 
So that's kind of what I, for the five years, I recaptured all of those arts and uh, I created more paintings. Now what I'm seeing, it would be amazing to find a way to attract people to come and just give them a tour. Anybody come down, give them a tour. Are you, are you in a business center down there? Or are you in a shopping center? You know what a Costco is? Uh, uh, yes, I do. So right before, off the five? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're road before Costco, make your left where the metro station, Sepulveda area. Yep. Okay. That's what I have been over five years now. Okay. And for the first thing that goes on my mind is um, how can I expose myself to attract people, maybe do local SEO or just uh, people coming to my so I give them a tour. And the next question is, what, what do you recommend authentically with business schedule? How, where, where do I go? What should I, how should I start? Well, there's a lot, there's a lot there. I mean, you know. No so SEO. No SEO. No SEO. Okay, no, uh, no SEO. No, no SEO. Okay. Get out in person. You'll do more in one day than you will in SEO for a year or two. Of, okay. I mean, it just it's just crazy. Um, but but uh, Pat, where, where what would you? So let me ask you this: the, the exact you, same the exact same advice applies. Number one, it sounds like probably you have more inventory at this juncture than than any human being alive <laughs> so i would i would take some of the best i would get out do a do a local show and start building your list i mean that's it you're right you're in a, an extremely affluent neighborhood you have a lot of opportunities at small deals you're always going to be working during the week so the side hustle is going to have to be doing a show on a weekend take the best of the best and tell your story you've got a good story there that people will connect with don't overthink it and do exactly what we recommended yeah, get out there and collect leads like crazy because then once you get all those emails, you can then have an event at your place, but you've got the leads, you've got the qualified leads and you can say, hey, we're having like a, a wine, you know, appetizer opening here and the artist is going to be here signing or, you know, whatever you want to do. But if you get out there, you're going you're gonna to get in front of the leads. I mean, like, you know, Laguna, right? Like, I mean, you're in the prime time. Like, and I would say, I would say, Look at San Diego up to LA. Like, look at Manhattan. Like, look at everywhere that you can get out and find, just try to get in some places, dip your toe in and see where you can get traction. That's what I would do. And here's the other thing, and it, and it applies for everybody, and myself included, Nick included, and it's hard. We, we, we have this tendency to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and try it once and we'll see how it goes. And it doesn't go and you quit, right? You're like, I'm not doing that again. I'm done. I'm over it. I tried. And it's so dangerous to fall into that trap. It's so dangerous because I use the fishing example all the time. The boat goes out into the middle of the ocean and you have one line in the water and nothing bites that line and one type of bait. And then you're just like steam home, I'm done. But if you have 15 lines in the water, how much more of a chance do you have to catch something? If you fire 50 arrows at the target versus two. And so when you commit to it mentally, you have to commit and say, no matter what, I'm doing 10 of these. I don't care if it takes me the entire year. After that 10, if it's terrible, it didn't work at all, I'll hang up the boost, but I'm going to do the 10. Because sometimes it's the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth. That's number one. Number two, the art show playbook that I have will absolutely make the difference between going and getting the ROI out of a show and not. You know, we're a digital first outfit. And what we're recommending here is the offline version, right? But when you bolt the digital aspect onto it, which is running the fish, I'm not going to go through the whole playbook, but it's running the fish bowl, it's gathering the emails, having the print giveaway, following up with them on a discount, and then following up again, contacting them individually, they add to carts. The, the, the podcast episode spells the whole thing out in detail. The ROI you can get out of running the sale at a show with that versus not is night and day. You will many times run that. And by doing the marketing after the fact, you're going to get an ROI out of the show that you did not have when, when, the, when the show ended that particular day. So those are, the, those are the two things that I would say. Thank you. Nick, um, um, so what I'm hearing is farmer's market, local art fairs, art shows, art walks, anything that I can just get myself out there. Maybe even charities, whatever. They let me do fundraising. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, take a look at the, we have a list that we were going to publish after, like of all the different ways of like th things you can try and do. But go try a show. I'm, I'm, I said LA to San Diego. I want you to like, if it works, then you can think about that being your opportunity. But right now, you just need to do one. Just go do one. You're a busy guy, right? Like you mentioned that, you're a busy guy. And what you need to do is just try one on Saturday. This Saturday. I want you to find one this Saturday. That goes for everybody listening, right? Who's in the spot. This Saturday, 
there is a farmer's market, a brewery, a something that I'm, I'm going to go to one this weekend with my family and I'm going to see, and you know, and it, it's like, if I don't start seeing artists and photographers at these things, I'm going to start going crazy because we, we've done a couple of calls with, with some other art storefronts members who are actually here. And, and like, these are the easiest things that you can do, but you can do one this weekend, right? For the first time, just go, just get a couple of prints um, and, uh, and follow the playbook and don't overthink it. Don't try to be perfect. Just go do one and see what happens. And then you start from there. Next question. Uh, where, where are you? LA ads. I know you had your hand up. Wait, he, he... Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Dan. It's just, I'm using my business account for, uh, for Zoom. Yeah, it's, it's all good. LA ads, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, first of all, thanks for doing this. This is fantastic. And everything you guys are talking about is actionable, which is huge. I have a peculiar circumstance that I'm sure others have as well. And that is I do half of my work is sort of the lovely uh, landscapes and, uh, you know, uh, places, that kind of thing. But the other half of my work is nudes. I do fine art nudes. That's something I can't bring to the, uh, to the street festivals, as far as I know. And I've been hesitant to do so. So my question is, what do you guys suggest when someone's marketing fine art nude photography? Any thoughts on that? That's actually been a question since I started with you guys about three or four months ago. A great question. I, I would imagine, are you muted, Nick? You going? No, I'm here. Yeah, I mean, the, the, first, the first just like hot take out of my head is like, you've got a like that's a niche right and i'm expecting that the people who buy nude art and are going to hang it on their wall at their home is a certain type of people that probably you know congregate somewhere online or in some groups or appreciate that or collect it i i would think that that is the case right off the bat yeah and how yeah, about, I, where, I would think find them is, is i guess the question i've, I've yeah. not done this before to market it i've just yeah, and I'm and I'm I'm pretty confident that there's not a playbook out there for that particular. <laughs> thing, right? Like I can I can tell you that right now. So here's here's what I would say, and it's interesting, right? Because it really just comes down to creativity. Okay, I had a I had a good friend of mine. I'm not embarrassed to say this. I'll say this. He found an all natural Viagra, right? And he tried to start selling the, the all natural Viagra. He's selling like two hundred thousand dollars a month of this stuff at this point. He's killing it so hard. He had to get extremely creative. Every single solitary place he tried to advertise, they got shut down. Facebook shut him down. Google shut him down. He ended up finding a website called The Chive. And The Chive is this website that shares like scantily clad women photos, right? And it, the what it is, it doesn't matter. It's you have to think outside of the box is the big question. And I would, I would everything's on the list. You know, the, 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 you know, sex toys slash porn conventions at strip clubs at those types of stores that sell those types of things, et cetera, anything. It, 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 it's literally just taking the shot. The bad news is that you're going to have a list of some crazy stuff there. The good news is there's going to be no competition whatsoever. I mean, in a lot of places, a lot of places you could probably walk right in the door and say, look, here's my art. What do you think? You have this kind of stuff in your store anyway. Let me hang 10 pieces for a month. Hang them for free. If I sell anything, we'll 50-50 split and see what happens, right? Like something as simple as that, one quick conversation, anyone's going to be like, oh, absolutely, I've got a shop. Are you kidding me? I've got nothing on my wall except this weird stuff. I would take it. So I think you've got to just come up with a list and walk in. And let me tell you, if that works, like, God, that could be a gold mine. There could probably be a sex toy shop in every single solitary neighborhood in the United this States. This is a family show. This is a family show, Pat. I know, I know, but I'm just thinking yeah. outside of the box. And, and I said, honestly, my, my work tends to be, I hopefully say, tasteful, and that's the that's the balance. So I'm trying to avoid the, the sort of the porn angle. But what you're suggesting is actually very sensible, at least to start opening up my thinking about it. Yes. Yeah, and it's not and it's not a judgment call on on no, no, how just, you do your things. It's like unfortunately there's a line in the sand, right? Like you are not going to be able to do any of the traditional stuff. I don't care how tasteful it is, <laughs> you're just not. So you're you're in that box. But that's okay. That's a, I think that's an interesting interesting spot to be. Yeah, because I think when you, and also have you sold this stuff before, like a decent amount? Oddly enough, I sold my first three pieces on art storefronts then they were nudes and it shocked me but it turns out that uh, uh, it was a sort of a specialized case i've not been able to replicate it so okay. oh, i have okay. sold so some did. work on art storefronts no less so, so you did uh you did contact those people and talk to them y yeah i have okay okay because that's that was my suggestion this goes for everybody everybody can learn from this that 
you know, when you make, it's the same thing as when you're in person, if you get a sale on your website, you know, you want to reach out to these people and find out who they are, what, what they do. So I would say like, the more that you're able to get sales, learn about these people, right? Hey, where do you, like, why are you into this? Do you, like, if you find some people that are really into it, you know, it's like, hey, where, where do you normally look for this stuff? Like, what groups are you in on Facebook? What, what, where do you kind of hang out with people? Like, you know, you, you get what I'm saying? You can ask some questions to find out, you know, where these people are congregating online or offline, right? And that will lead you to more of people that are like those people, which are likely to buy your art. Or like yeah, your- it's, it's outside of the box. And the Instagram influencers is probably a good one there too. Okay, yeah. Jenny, um, you're next. Uh, Jenny Pigor, let me unmute Yeah, you. Jenny Pigor, right. So, yeah, can hear you. oh, I guess I need to un- unmute myself. No, 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 you're good. Jenny. We can hear you. We can oh, hear you okay. Quick. okay, so um, I have sort of a slightly different problem. Um, I'm um, an artist and I'm, I've gotten into photography a lot. So I my, my site has like two different things on it photography and artwork Mm -hmm. and to complicate it further I'm also a writer and I've published a couple books so um it's like uh I you know I I don't want to feel like I'm constantly you know hounding people to buy stuff online I'm just done with that and I mean I maybe the shows are a good idea for me because I could have all of it but it just seems to me that people try to put you in a box and say, oh, she's a writer or she's a photographer or she's an artist. They can't deal with like all of it. Like who the hell are you? You know? So, um, it, and so it's a focusing problem. I'm not sure where to go with that. So where, where are you making sales? Tell me what you're selling. Well, I have, I started out selling some artwork, um, just to people that I know a little bit. And well, what I about like, let me, a let, me, little bit let me ask on- the question a little differently. Sorry. Uh, in the last year or two, break down your sales for me. Like, have, is it fifty percent prints or 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 the original the paintings? Um, is it you know how does it break down with the the no art? No photos. I haven't I haven't even shown my photos anywhere okay. or you know, and I haven't really been pushing the photos. But but that's sort of where my heart you is right now. Haven't sold any photos. And in the last year, how many how 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 much revenue did you do from your art? Not much. And, you, and, but part of it is because, um, I moved in the middle of all of that. That's and, okay. Um, that's okay. But what, give me a rough idea. How much? Not much, like three or four. Three or four prints? Yeah. Okay. Where did you sell those? Uh, through art storefronts. Oh, you did through your website. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then how much of your, your, your book do you sell? Well, I haven't been pushing any of it. I mean, I sell more books. I mean, some of them are in bookstores, but. Um, okay. Well, yeah. it sounds to, you know, it, it, it sounds to me like, you know, you're spreading yourself pretty thin when you're just starting out on everything. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Look, you're, you're talking to somebody who has made all of these mistakes. I have made all of these mistakes. I have, I got to tell you, I mean, it, you, there's, when you, when you have a business, this is, this, is a, this is a good point. This is a really good point. When you have a business, there really are a lot of things that you can do. There are, okay? Let me just tell you, there are 15 things that we could add at art storefronts right now that we don't do right now. That some of you might be going, why don't they do that? Why don't they do that? And a lot of people are. I have learned my lesson so many times. And it, it, I, you, know, you, you have to focus on something in order to get good at something right? You can't spread yourself thin. It just, it just doesn't work. It's the whole boil the ocean problem, right? And so even though you can do something, doesn't mean you should do it. Now you might do it later. It's all about timing, right? You might do it later uh, when you're more successful in in a certain area, but the normal way that you want to go is you want to put some lines in the water. You want to get some traction somewhere in other words, get some sales with some sort of product or subject matter that you have and look at that as like the wedge that you're going in at. That's your beachhead. That's your Normandy, right? Like the U.S. Army didn't go and just try to invade all of Europe. They went to Normandy and they took the beach and then they spread out from there. You want to do the exact same thing. So you got to try to, I, it, I can't answer your question. All I can tell you is, well, you sold four prints on your website. There's plenty of people here that haven't sold any. We were just talking to one of them. Uh, a couple people back. And so, you know, 
try to focus on that and push that as far as you can. I have no problem with you putting a line in the water for the photographs or any of the other stuff. Maybe they might take off a little more, but ultimately you got to try to, you know, you got to try to take one of these things and move it forward as far as you can. Yeah, well, I, I am having a solo art show in about two weeks um, at an art association. I'm, I'm in New England, and um, so that should tell me something. And it's all paintings, no photos. That's but, good. And you know, yeah. the, default, the default answer to this question is it's, it's, it's really a, a question of niche selection, right? Like, what's my niche? Is it photography? Is it, is it literature? Is it paintings? You know, you can have an individual niche and a brand and be known as, you know, the landscape photographer that shoots lighthouses, or you can be the artist that paints bridge reflections, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Or you can be the brand yourself. And, and, and you might just go that route if you want to. You can be Jenny Pivor, um, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah. And that can be the brand. And, you know, you can grow the list and, and build yourself up and, and share what you're doing and get a loyal following. And, you know, you could sell enough across the board doing what you like. That's, that's an option. There's no right answer ever. Uh, it, I like that. There is. Yeah, it's, it, it's an opportunity. And, and knowing that allows you to focus on that. And then you're really just building that. At the end of the day, it's always the same. Like you have a good niche that works great. You don't, you are the brand yourself. That's okay too. It all is going to require marketing. It's all going to require growing your email list. It's all going to require emailing the email list. And it's all going to require staying on for three to five years until you have something of serious value. Those are just the rules. And, and, and you, there, there's no shortcut. There's no magic way around it. There's no passive income. You're not going to pay a local SEO company and all of a sudden you're going to get 25 orders a month. It just doesn't work that way. It's like anything else. It's just a grind. So it's the way it's the way it is. <laughs> every, every company is that way. Every startup. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the way it is. So I, I hope that helps. Let us know how it goes. Um, I will. Go. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We, we, we want an update on that. Okay. Kimberly, you're next. I'm going to unmute you right now. Hi. Um, Hi. I, uh, I have a question of a dynamic I noticed uh, from people who have bought my work. Um, uh, they need me and then a long time goes by and then a holiday comes up and they contact me and they kind of want fussed over a little bit and then they buy it through the website. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure out how I could maybe take advantage of that dynamic, like maybe possibly offering to my, my work is artwork of Italy. And so I was thinking maybe offering to speak somewhere or um, talking uh, um, to Italian cultural centers or things like that. I, I wanted to take advantage, like I finally sold enough to notice the dynamic, but now I don't know what to do with it. Well, Kim Kimberly, tell me, tell me again, I, cause I didn't catch what you, so they're, they're calling you in there what, what did you say there that they're, they're asking, are they asking you questions about the, the area that you're painting or like, yes, like, um, what are they asking? Uh, you? Like, what's going on there? Uh, a lot of the time they say that they've been to the place in Italy that they are interested in that piece or, um, a lot of them have a relative, like maybe a husband or a parent or something from that location and um almost everybody well everybody's either been to italy or has a relative from italy and also they've met me and and um they they weren't people i knew before it's just you know i was out and about or traveling and chatting to people and i give them my business card and then you know they, you're right, they don't do anything right then, but mm -hmm. you know, a certain amount of time goes by and um, cause they have my business card, they, they like, they text me or something and they went kind of fussed over a little bit. Like I noticed they already know what they want. You know, they want that piece cause they were there or something. But then once I talked to them, they're like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. But I, I don't know how to put myself in situations to increase that dynamic. Well, I mean, I have a couple of, uh, uh, if, 
I have a couple of thoughts. I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but it's, you know, first of all, they're deeply, there's a deep connection happening there, right? That you're creating, which is awesome. And I've seen your work. I know who you are. You've, you've, you've been an awesome member. So it's good to see you. Um, and uh, I've been to like Cinque Terre, you know, before. Um, your, your work is awesome. And you have a total great niche. Like I can totally see why people connect with it. And, and uh, um, if they've been there and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, are you, you know, what I'm wondering is like, are you doing everything you can to get the sale on the spot at the shows or wherever you're meeting them in person? Because I think you're, what you're saying is there's, there's a delay that happens, which is normal. Delay, the delay is going to be normal, right? M oftentimes. And then, and then once this delay is over, they contact you, they kind of cause a fuss, and then you kind of bring them across the finish line. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yes. There, is there any follow-up marketing going on there? Are you emailing them on a regular basis? Uh, well, I, a lot of the time I meet people when I'm traveling and I strike up conversation and give them my business card, you know, um, because oftentimes, um, uh, you know, I speak Italian and I know a lot about the culture because, um, my family's from Italy mm -hmm. and I see people like looking lost and trying to figure out what to do and I go over and help them. And they're like, oh, well, hi. And I'm like, oh, um, I'm here traveling too, but I'm an artist. And I give them my business card mm -hmm. and, and stuff. But, you know, uh, and it's worked really well, but I'm not there all the time. And so, um, you know, I was trying to think of uh, what, I, what I can do to get in contact with people people who travel there like I have been getting more traction in Facebook and Instagram you know I always target my ads to people who travel to Italy but um but your everything you're saying is true that I've been experiencing really the people who met me at the start are the ones who are turning into customers real quickly right because there's they, they kind of, oh, I almost feel like it's further down the funnel because they met me. Right. Absolutely. It absolutely is. That's so the, you're, you're, so I'm going to like, if I get this back, let's put this into business terms, right? So like when you're meeting these people, you're, you're meeting qualified leads and you're moving them down the funnel for sure. Like somebody who has seen you and met you is way like, that's one of the other parts of like, that you have to appreciate when you do things in person. Like if we're talking about art shows or things like that, you have, when they get to meet you, see your product in person, you're literally moving them so much further down the funnel so much faster, you know? Um, but what, what you're, what, what you're asking here is you need to get more qualified leads. You want to expand and you're trying to figure out how to do that here because you've kind of been doing it there, right? Yes, is that what you're yes. asking? Okay. Mm -hmm. Pat, how would you approach like, and how has your Facebook traction been with the Facebook ads? Um, you know, they Have you get been generating quali qualified leads from that. And look, what um, I mean by that is, are they opting in to your lead capture with a 20% off? Um, they, I am getting about a three to 4% when, you know, depending on the month. And okay. That's not bad. I mean, with, if you tighten up the targeting a little bit on that, like maybe with the age range or like some other things, you'll probably get that over 5%, but that's that you're close. Pat, what would you say? Off the top of my head, I would get a big stack of business cards. I would start traveling around Italy and attempting to have 50 to 150 conversations a day. I'd help people that are lost. I'd, be in the <laughs> yes. I'd stand out. <laughs> 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 I mean, if that's, if that's working, triple, triple down on it. But you're, you're in a good spot because, you know, the niche selection is such a big one, right? And obviously, yeah. everyone that goes to Italy wants a piece of that memory on their wall forever. You know, my best friends just like go to Positano every year and half their house is filled with the Positano and Amalfi pictures now, like in the, in the little dishes and the little everything. So it's a, it's a great niche to be in and it, it, it's probably pretty easy to target digitally. Being that you're selling so well already, being that you already have traction, you're probably an anomaly in the sense that you've got validation, you know, your stuff works. Um, it seems like your personality is a big part of the sale. So I would, I would continue mixing that in as much as possible and all the social stuff. I'd have to look at your Facebook and look at your Instagram um, and see if you're just showing images of your work or 
you know, if there's pictures of your beautiful smiling face and you're talking mm-hmm. and, you know, occasionally you're talking in, 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 in Italian, you're saying buongiorno and all the rest. So I think your personality seems like to me like a big part of it, just based on what I'm hearing. But I also do think with some creative work on Facebook, you could, you could probably get away with that where most, most can't right out of the gates. Thank you both for your advice. Y'all are inspiring me to do more videos because that's the only thing I can think of besides meeting people in person, you You know. And are you, are you, this, I think this is a really important point for you, especially like definitely, definitely, definitely follow the art marketing calendar. Like, because it like do the giveaways, keep doing them. Cause I think. I love it. (laughs) I think do, do, do more of them, give some bigger things. Like just get creative with it but follow all of that because I think that with your niche, if you, if you just keep going, like you're going to come across people. It's just like me. Like I I've been there. Like, you know what I mean? Like I love the place too. And so as soon as I saw your art, I was like, Oh wow. I wonder if I should get one of those because you know, like that was, if you've been there and it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool experience, you know? Um, and so I think, I think those contests and, and everything that's in the art marketing calendar is going to help you kind of amplify everything. And then, yeah, continue to look for you. I think you have some good ideas with the, you know, maybe there's some cultural set. I don't really know about that, but like you're thinking the right way is what I want you to know. You're okay. thinking the right way about it, which is get more qualified leads. Where are you going to get them? Facebook is definitely a possibility. I would see what you can continue to do there. Okay. Thank you so much for taking the time. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Bruner, you're next. You're unmuted right now. Bruner, are you still there? Okay, I think our hand. Next is user. <laughs> I don't know who user is. We're unmuted user. Are you there? Um, I don't know if this is Joy. I don't know why I came in as user. I put my name in. All Hi, good, Joy. We got you. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Good. So I, I am new to Art Storefronts. I've been with Art Storefronts now. I went live in February. Welcome to um, One sale. Nice. And the majority of what I've been doing has been at galleries and shows. So this is kind of like the first time I'm taking it um, online. So I really don't have an email list to go through, right? So basically, I'm just starting from scratch on Facebook. Um, I do have a, a large Instagram following, not large, a thousand people or whatever. Good. So I'm targeting that as well. I'm posting four or five times a day on Facebook as well. Um, but I have an art show. I, I'm out in Orange County too. Um, I'm actually in a gallery in Laguna. And for the Art Walk, which is Thursday, um, I'll be showcasing my art. And where is, there's a link somewhere on, um, I guess, on the Facebook Wins group that talks about what to do during shows. Yes. I've been in sales my whole life, right? Selling technology. So I've been to hundreds of trade shows. So I kind of get the gist of what I need to do. And I've been out there selling in either uh, art venues or galleries. But I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. You're definitely missing something. This is a little bit more advanced than the trade show playbook. Um, we'll, we'll email it to you. Everyone's going to get it. Uh, it, but what probably like a couple hours after this thing. Yeah, and it's also if you go to the marketing resource vault, which is uh-huh. linked like when you're in the art storefronts like site manager, it's in the top bar. You'll right. see marketing resources and then marketing resource vault. If you go there and you search, or actually it's even on the homepage, like you'll see art show playbook and it has everything there. Okay, all right, because I've done my giveaway the- already, and I was going to do a giveaway at the show you as well. To. Have to. Um, to be able to, you know, do a fishbowl with either pieces yep. of paper or business cards, right? Mm-hmm. And then also do the giveaway. Um, yep. But other than that, and I don't obviously want you to go through the video that I'm going to look at, um, what, do you, uh, what else do you think is a key component that um, the majority of people miss at these shows? I mean, I think that's it. It's, it's hand-to-hand combat there, right? Like you've got so many people that are coming by. So as long as you follow the rules, you have the fishbowl, you have some big balloons hanging on the front of the booth, win this print. You're, you're encouraging as many people to drop the cards into the bowl as possible. You have the automation, the email, the email automation built up automatically. You announce the winner. Congratulations, so-and-so. Uh, I'm so sorry the rest of you didn't win. I don't ever win anything easier either. But let me just do something for you. I'm going to give you a one-time coupon for 25% off anything store-wide. It's going to expire on Sunday. Here so it is. Do you think I should have some coupons printed out and ready to go? 
No, 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 no. We have the whole playbook. I'm, I'm just kind of the, play, the playbook will show you everything, everything, everything you need to do. It's, it's the follow up after the fact that okay. changed the entire game. Here's, because here's, notice, yeah. Here's, here's what I, here, there's a couple of things that I want to mention. Number one, uh, so you've been in sales, you've done trade shows. I want to make sure that anybody else listening doesn't make this mistake. So I was like, you know, uh, um, and, and Kimberly, this is for you too. I didn't get to, I didn't, didn't get to talk about this, but, um, but when you are doing shows, like you definitely do not want to print out a coupon and you don't want to be handing out your business cards. I mean, of course you have to, sometimes they will ask for one. You want their contact information, guys. That is the key. You got to capture that lead, right? Capture that lead. And so you don't want to do things at a, like at trade shows or, um, and I've done a ton of trade shows in my life. So I've, 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 I've had to work through this a lot with a lot of people that work for me, but you don't want to be pushing people out of your booth. And so if you give them a business card and, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go to the website later and I'll buy. No, 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 no. You do not want to do that. You want to give them a reason to buy on the spot. Okay. Hey, yes, you can buy from me later, but if you buy here today, I can give you a 20% off for the people that are here at the show for coming to the show and seeing me in person, I'm gonna give you a deal, right? So you wanna to try to get that sale on the spot because the statistics show that the likelihood of them buying after the fact is way lower. And that's why you have to do all the follow-up marketing, right? That's why it's so key. Like if anybody's in your booth that you can get their email address, you gotta get their email address. You wanna get as many as you can, right? And Did so I have that up there mentioning that whoever buys at this particular event will get 20% off? Should I make a little uh, thing. Well, you might, you might just like have your normal prices and maybe slash them or you might just, yeah, you might have like a sign that says 20% off for all so, such and such show attendees. Right. Um, so there's a, there's a reason to buy. And then when somebody's like about, I love, you know, about to leave and they're like, Oh, I'll go to your website later. You're like, Hey, I just want you to know there's 20% off. If you want to get it here today, I mean, it's a great deal, you know? And so you're, you're trying to get it on the spot. And then the, the point I was saying um, where, I, where I mentioned Kimberly is we actually, Pat and I actually talked to somebody the other day about this, but they were for years, they were doing art shows and they were handing, there's like, I was handing out my business cards, but it ne nothing ever happened. And no, nobody came back to my site. And I said, you, you, you were close, but you did the wrong thing. You got to flip that around instead of giving your business card, get their business card, get their information. It's okay to give your business card. There's nothing wrong with doing that but you got to collect leads guys. So if you can, you know, let's say you're sitting next to somebody on the airplane and they like your stuff. It's like, Hey, let, give me your email address or your business card. I'll get you on my insiders list. Like where I'm giving special deals and like special content, like you'll love it. Like I'm always trying to give like great value there and stuff like that. And, and, it, and if they're down, they'll give you their email address or they'll just give you a business card. You just got to leave as opposed to, Hey, here, check me out later. And then you don't, ever see them again, right? And odds are they're probably not gonna go and look at your website and do that, but you're gonna do the work and you're gonna, you're gonna email them. And so, uh, Joy, I wanna go back to like, you said that you've been doing a lot of galleries and you've had success at some galleries and some shows in the past, but you don't have an email list, right? No, well, so here's the problem, which, so if I'm at a Gartner conference, right, and I'm selling technology, I'm getting people's business cards because I'm in more of a business environment. I correct? See. But so here I am at the shows. I have a book out, a beautiful portfolio and a pen, and everyone's writing their email and information down. Well, at the end of the day, I'm talking to people. I'm selling things. I can't monitor what they're writing. And at the end of the day, I look at my sheet and I'm horrified because I can't even decipher half the emails. <laughs> people are not leaving phone numbers, obviously. So it's an email and they're not even legible. Do you have a do you have an iPad or or like a tablet of some sort? I I do I do. So we have there's a feature on our storefronts where you can do you create a form page with just the email on it and then there's a toggle on there that says landing page okay. and if you do that it will take over the whole screen and all they'll will be on there is just an you know email and uh, and you know submit and you can have some text above it so it's like sign up for my email list so if you want to do it that way you can you can have the iPad there. Right. Well, in the past, obviously, I didn't have art storefronts, so I didn't have any venue to, to send them to, right, to sign up. But no, that's a good idea. Will that information be on the link that you're going to be sending me to? Um, it, uh, we, could, we could include that. Let's make sure that we include that. Let's write that down. 
somebody write that down on our team who's listening to this. Um, you can also search it out in the support center. It's like, uh, there's a specific article that's like, um, how to create a sign up form for art shows. In fact, I'm sure it's in the playbook. I'm sure it's in the art show playbook. Okay. That you're going to send me, right? Yeah. yeah okay. That's going to be in the resources. Yes. Okay. Cause that, I couldn't believe it. Then I'm looking, you know, when I started here, I have to generate email. So I did a giveaway. I have about 30 to 40 brand new people, you know, from the internet. I don't know if it's the right audience or not. It appears a lot of photographers are liking my work. So I don't know if that's the right audience. But then when I'm going to, you know, do my email campaign through MailChimp, I'm horrified that none of the emails were appropriate. So if that could alleviate that, um, that would be great. Yeah, I, I, would, I would try that. Yep, and we have time. Um, good luck. And I might even come down there and see you. I'm, I'm yeah, so there. I'm at Laguna Art. Uh, dot com by the um, I'm over by the what is it Las Brisas and yep. the um, um, museum. Got it. Very yeah, cool. I, just I just live in Newport, wow. so I'm close. Okay, we've and, got and, and, and don't don't you'll see this in the playbook too. But that's why the fishbowl is good too, because the business card there's no writing and it's fast. So you know if you have a business card, if you have the fishbowl and the iPad or whatever, like. Hopefully, people will drop the business card. It's faster for them anyway, and you definitely get a perfect email address. So, okay. We've got one more question from James. James, you're unmuted. Go for it. James, are you still there? James Friesen. Okay, looks like that's it. Um, does anybody that's, that's left, and if you're on video, we can see you. Anyone with the, oh, the James, last question? James he's, seems to be messing with his, uh, his mic. His can you tell? He might be coming on here. James, you want to try? What happened here? No, I can't unmute him. Is there any, oh, I think you're good, James. Can you talk? Oh. No, we see you. <sighs> oh, no, no, we got it. You now. We got it. You can hear me now? Yes. yes. You look oh, like okay. you're in like a dark tunnel or something. But we'll I, I'm in the dark. I, I wasn't going to use video. Um, anyway, I've heard a lot about the importance of doing shows mm -hmm. uh, today, which is great. But just on the digital front, Mm -hmm. Um, I, like I, someone just mentioned, you know, they, they hadn't really even tried too much. They have a thousand followers on Instagram. Uh, a lot of my friends that aren't even trying to sell anything, they'll have like, you know, oh, I have like a thousand followers. Maybe I don't have enough friends, but like when I starting out, like I've gone from like 100 to 200 Instagram followers in the last uh, few months, which is pretty cool. But like, that's where I'm at 200 for that. And mm -hmm. my Facebook page, I have like 60 people following it or likes and I, I haven't done a giveaway yet so I'm about to I want to do my first giveaway but if if I'm announcing it only to that small number of people like do you wait do you recommend waiting like you got to have at least a thousand to before like no go for it but but if, if the giveaway also it's the type of as far as I understand it I know there's different types of giveaways some people I've seen giveaways where it's like if you mention a friend you get an entry into it or whatever if you right. That, right. Like that obviously would expand your following right there. But if that's not what it is for, for like when I'm, when I'm following the, the, the procedure for their first giveaway, like how do you, like, how is it, how can I get like just the basic, like, you know, a thousand followers on Instagram just, or, or something or, or on Facebook, how do you just grow that initially? Cause I'm only going to be putting out this announcement about the giveaway to this very small number. Like how does it grow? Well, you're going to be doing a, a lot of giveaways. Okay. So like the giveaway is actually designed to grow your list and your following. Like it's a, it's a, it's a tactic. Okay. Mm -hmm. As much as anything else. So, I mean, look, we, we did, we had a project that we were working on recently called university fine art. And we literally, this is Patrick and I doing this because it, we were doing it from scratch. Right. And our marketing team, and uh, we started with zero and we did a giveaway with zero. Like literally, what did we do? We launched the Facebook and the Instagram page like the day before and we did a giveaway. And then we ended up with, I don't know, a couple hundred emails, a couple hundred followers, likes on the page mm -hmm. and things like that. Now we, I think we spent like 150 bucks in ads to do that. Okay, yeah. so you boost like the post. Targeted, like we did that, but I'm not recommending that you do that. Like we, we were, we, we had a, a, like a targeted focus on, we were starting from scratch. So we're like, you know, we're obviously very experienced with like Facebook ads and things like that. And so I'm willing to throw some money on the table and risk it, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, but, um, but you've got something to start with. Right. So like 
the people that are following you right now, and do you have an email list at all? Uh, a very small one, yeah. So that's the other thing too, is that we want to get those people onto your email list. Like you want to have them on all, like it's called the omni-channel strategy, right? You want them on your email list. You want them following you on social media because you got to make sure that they're seeing your stuff all the time. But mm -hmm. don't hesitate to do it because this is a way that you're going to get, you know, from 200 to 300 to 400. Like the, the great part about the, the giveaways is that they compound, right? So like mm. you do one and then now a lot of those people are going to get on your email list and then you're going to grow your social following, right? And then you do your next one. Now the pie is bigger, right? And so it's going to grow even bigger than that. And then you do your next one. It's going to get even bigger. So I would not hesitate to start. Pat, what would you say? Yeah, I think, again, this is where the perspective comes in, right? You get, the tendency is to get so hung up and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this one giveaway and I'm going to pay for a print and that's going to be expensive. and I'm going to run this contest and I don't know if I'm there yet. And those are all the normal thoughts to have early on. You got to, you got to just absolve yourself of, of those things. Like you're working hard on this business. You're trying to grow this business. You're going to spend the amount of money that it takes to invest in that print in hours spent trying to get extra Facebook fan followers and Instagram followers and this and that. This technique works. It will work. You might fall flat on your face the first time. I mean, terrible, like grow your list by only like six or seven, but you know what? It'll still be a win. You're going to be like, okay. Here's where I went wrong. Here's what went really well. Here's something new that I learned and I can go and do it again. And I just don't know, you know, you're, you're, you're asking the, the, the classic chicken, the egg question, right? Like which one came first? And it's hard. There is no right answer. The answer is like you, you beg, borrow, cheat, steal, hustle, cold deck your family members, do whatever you have to do to get it out there as much as you can early on. And it's hard. It's hard in the beginning. It just is. That's just, that's, that's, it's the life of it. But after you get a couple of them in the books, it just starts to grow and you get more momentum and they start sharing them. And it's like, oh, I really want to get one. And then the next thing you know, you've done six of them. And the next thing you know, it's Q4. It's like, I never won one of those. I actually do want some of his art. I'm going to buy a couple of pieces. And that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah, and, 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 and whenever, like, if you have any friends that are telling you, I've got a thousand followers, I mean, I, I, who, knows, who knows if they're legitimate or not? Like, you can go to these sites and like Fiverr.com and buy a thousand followers and some weird things like that. It just doesn't really matter. All that matters is if there's quality people on there that are worth it for you. Right. Yeah. And, and like, yeah, and, and don't overcomplicate the giveaway because like I was saying, you could go to, you can go to the, the, you know, buy a, a photo paper print. That's a decent size. I think you could probably buy like a 24 by 36 for like under $30. Right. So it's not a, it's not a big deal. Um, and, and, and I, you have incentives running sometimes too. Yes. Yes. I was just going to say that, that, you know, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, on our marketing team, he, he, he set this up. He just asked me about it the other day, but there's a, there's a, there's a discount going on, on the graphic dimensions site. It's asfprints.com. Um, and I think he has it in, it's either in the art marketing calendar somewhere. Um, but what we're trying to do is when we're telling you guys to run a giveaway and you got to buy some prints, like we're trying to give you a discount to get to make that cost as low as possible. That's how badly I want you guys to do these things and do these shows as well, right? Like just, you know, get the cheapest price that you can and get out there and find traction. Like that's the most important thing. So we may have to follow back up on that, but it's not like you're, you, you don't need to go invest $199 on a print to give away like a thousand dollar print. Like if you're just starting out, you know, which you are, then uh, maybe go with the smaller one and then just start building it up from there. But just dip your toe in and just, but still do it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess that brings up another question um, because I'm in Canada. Has anyone done the, the math as to whether or not um, with the exchange rate and, and shipping uh, border costs, customs, like is the graphic dimensions, like, cause I hear all about it now. I would say graphic dimensions. Um, how can I figure out whether it's worth it to switch think, from print partner? I think, I think you got to stick with print partner. There's just so many complications. With, okay. Um, That's good to know. That's yeah, all. I but, I'll, but I'll tell you this, they've got great pricing. They got great pricing like out, out of the gate. So mm -hmm. I, I would just make sure you're looking at the right media type. You know what I mean? Like, right. um, so like, that's why I keep saying photo paper. I mean, I, I know the business so well that I know that you can make amazing prints on photo paper, but photo papers are cheap. You know, right. they're really cheap for you guys. So you can have like a matted photo paper and it's like, somebody's getting something. They look really nice, you know, but it costs you not very much. You know what I mean? So, right. so that's what you can do. And you're, 
you're, you know, you're going to, you'll spend 20, $30, maybe, I don't, I don't know what it is, like what size you want to pick, right? The bigger you go, the more expensive it's going to be, but, but uh, you're going to pay for that. And then you're, you're going to increase your following, you know, as much as you can. And maybe you'll get a sale or two out of it. You might, you know? Right. And so for, for promoting the giveaway, probably it wouldn't hurt to, uh, to boost the, the post. I'm assuming then just to like a basic yeah uh, you yeah to- yeah there's yes yeah the, the, the long and the short is like this is exactly why you have to execute right like mm-hmm. everyone's market is a little bit different and, and and how it gets traction early is a little bit different and it's one of those things where i've never seen a technique have higher roi in terms of you know pouring some gas on a very very small fire and so you have to run it a couple of times there's no shortcut to taking your licks and learning so you can go at it the first time, you could run it for a couple of days, see what kind of response you're getting, and then hammer the boost, you know, give it 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and see how it goes. And just take notes and see how it works for you the first time around. And don't hesitate to reach out to your friends, even if it's seven of them and say, do me a favor, will you? I'm trying to get some of this art out here. Will you just share this with your email list, somebody, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and do some hand to hand combat early on. Um, you know, friends, family, ask whoever it's like, the ask isn't that heavy. It's like, hey, uh, my cousin James, He's doing a print giveaway. He really wants to grow his following. Can you guys check this out, right? Like it's a free print. His art's really cool. I think you'll like it. Pretty easy to convince somebody to do that with a little arm twist and buy him a couple of beers and uh, see what happens. Yeah, I also think that like when I talk about the leverage, I mean, this goes for everybody, the leverage of the the cost of the print, like just appreciating that, like Instagram influencers, um, uh, moderators of Facebook groups. Like, you know, if you have a specific niche, and you can approach the, the, the moderator of that group and say, hey, I'll give you a print for free. Like, will you share this, my contest in your group? Like, these guys will do it. You will find people that will do that for you. Like, uh, if, they're, if they're a big enough fan of the, of the content, of the subject matter that you have, or if they, they might just do it for a price, you know, like mm-hmm. $50 or $100. But there's, there's, there's ways to amplify your contest to get in front of other people that are that are really creative like that. And I encourage everybody to be thinking about it because like I said, the cost of these prints are so low, it's just a huge advantage um, for what you price them at. Like, hey, this is a $200 print. Like, I'd, I'd be happy to give you one if you'd share this. And it's like, he has no idea that cost you 35 bucks, you know? He's like, mm-hmm. wow, that's pretty amazing. I'll take that, sure, I'll share it. So mm-hmm. try, try things like that too. I think people should be trying that all the time. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Nick, we're, we're pretty much out of questions. Uh, unless anyone that's still on video wants to raise a hand. Nobody else has any questions. Michael, I think Michael's raising his hand like he's got one. So I got you, Michael. Don't worry. Let me. Come on, guys. We're here for I you. Gotta, I got to go down and find your name. Hold on. Here he is. All right, Michael, you're up. Hey, I'm just, uh, I'm so new. I haven't even got on the, on, on, uh, loaded up yet. I'm uh, through to my punch list as such. And I'm listening to all this good stuff and the playbooks and all that, and it sounds great. But one thing you talk about doing gifts uh, of a print. Now, to me, artwork is when you put it up on the wall, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, do I give a print or do I actually give a print that's framed and under glass from the printing shop? And, And also, when you have discounts, do you uh, discount the framing and everything? Is that I, discounted? I believe the whole thing is discounted, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Um, I'm I mean, not I, I can understand discounting the print because it's not that expensive. But when you start framing things up, uh, you know, the price goes up drastically. Yeah. It, and you see it, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's your choice of what you want to offer to answer that question. And, uh, you know, you might want to start with something a little bit, you know, more modest, but if not, and you want to go for it, I've got no problem with that. Well, um, I want to say, if I say there's a 20% discount, I don't want people coming back and going, Hey, that was just on the print. I want the whole package. You know, I want yeah. it under glass and on my wall. I'd say a couple of things. One, you know, if a restaurant entices you with an appetizer to come in and get the meal, you know, think of it like that. Right. So I, I, I get your point. I take your point about you, you think art is ready to hang on the wall, but this is mm. also just a marketing tactic. And so think of, think of it like an appetizer instead of giving them the entire oh, meal. Okay. And, All right. and then number two, um, 
you know, before you run one of these things, this inevitably happens always. You start creating all these situations that might happen, might not happen, right? Like, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? Like, what if somebody comes back? Do not stress about it until it happens. Okay. Period. Once it happens and it happens more, more than twice, you got a problem. Otherwise, don't, don't no worry problem. about it till the well runs dry. No, exactly. Don't sweat you this. Guys, you guys would all laugh. You guys would not believe the way that we move over here at Art Storefronts, like from a marketing standpoint. I mean, we're running, like I tell you guys, test, test, test. Like we're talking about tests. How many tests do you think we're running a day, Pat? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. It, it's, it's, you guys, I mean, and we're, and, and it's just ship it, ship it, ship it. Like as, as soon as anybody is overthinking everything, I just, I know, I, I, always, I always use this 80-20 this rule. Like I say it all the time. Everybody's probably just so just tired of me hearing it, uh, talking about it at this company. But hey, it's, hey, it's important. an Italian's law, Kimberly. It's yeah, an Italian's it's Pareto's, law. Prince, Pareto's law, Pareto's Pareto. principle, right? 80% of your sales come from 20% of your products. 80% of, you know, your joy in life comes from 20% of your friends. Like you can apply it to anything. And it is the absolute, right. you know, so when it comes to, 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 you know, marketing tactics and things like that, like you just, you just got to move quickly and just get 80, get 80% 80 of the way there and of, of like whatever you're trying to get done and ship it and go because that last 20%, it can take you like a month. I've, I've told people, you know, one of, or one of the biggest like management things that I try to teach people is that if you take a project that you want to do and you get it 80% there you can probably get it done almost any single project today, like literally today. But if you go for the perfection on that last 20%, it could take you another month. And, and if you just 80, 20, everything, you can ship so much, you can move so fast, you know, in a matter of a month, you can do 40 things, you know, rather than one, you know, that you got one perfect thing done and you don't even know if it's going to work or not. Right. And instead, I've, 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 I've always said, uh, Perfection is for the gods. Excellence is obtainable. There you, you know, go. You wow. know. Um, also, I was listening about, and I don't know if I saw it on your information because you've, you've snowed me with thousands of things in, in the last week or so here of just getting started. Yeah, we're good. Um, basically, with the show, um, go out, uh, print. If, let's just, I have a thousand pieces, but I'm just starting out, and maybe I got a hundred pieces up on my board, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I go do a show, I, I print up 50 of those and put them in the tent and have a couple computers out front and say, this is a virtual show? You can buy it off the wall or, or order it up. Is that what you're saying? And, and, and or get contacts? No. No. No, I go out and do a show at the park. I got my yeah, pieces. You just, have, you just have your prints there at the booth. You know, you yeah. have a, you have a, you follow the art show playbook. I would just read that. It'll, it's probably confusing hearing us talk about it since you're new. Yeah. Um, I would read the material. It'll make a lot more sense. Okay. It's, it's that, that's what I thought you were doing is, is show your work and you could buy it off the wall here, but I'd rather have you go onto my email list or contact list and, and buy it through art store. No, 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 no. You, 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 no, you, you want to sell them that piece right then and there if they will buy it. As a secondary, you're trying to collect leads. That's the principle. Well, I saw the thing, I, what I thought I saw was you're at a show in Phoenix uh, and people from uh, Florida are there and go, you know, I'd like that and I'd like that, but, uh, you know, I don't want to put it on the plane and such. Oh, you're so, talking about something different. Okay, yeah. So you can take the order on the spot and the printing company will just drop ship it to their house. Yeah. 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 But, you, but you can take the order. Like you don't have to force them to get on a computer or an iPad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What I mean, do it on the computer. It's, it's yeah, right exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Get well, your website live. Get your website live. Anybody that's on here that does not have their website live. Remember Pareto's principle applies to the website. You're not in the game unless your website is live. So please get your website live as fast. Well, as I just got my uh, thing back on what I had didn't get quite right for you guys. So tomorrow I'm bringing my tech in and hopefully we'll complete all of the spots I missed and we'll get there. I'm yeah. really excited about this, guys. I totally. really am. Glad to have you. Welcome. I just, I just need to know, and I'm thinking you're going to show me how to get my my stuff to the right people. Yep. That's what it's That's all about, game. I think. That's the game. All right. Thank you for this uh, talk. It's, it's good.
No problem. You're welcome. We have one last question that came in in text, and it looks like um, from Stan, and it, he's just asking about what type of Facebook ads. We didn't really cover what type of Facebook ads specifically, but I do have a recommended course on how to approach Facebook ads and where to get started with Facebook ads. Uh, it's a it's a podcast that that we that we recorded just recently, so we can include that in the email that we send to everybody. Yeah, that's too big of a topic to just go over right here. It's it's more important to watch. Patrick's recommendations on that. If anybody's thinking about, is this just a, a good point? If anybody is thinking about starting Facebook ads, go there first and watch that and listen to that. Is that right, Pat? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Before definitely. you just start wasting money and spending a bunch of money, just he's going to guide you in the right direction of where you should start. Cause there's things that you should advertise at first, um, like to warm traffic, uh, before you do try to do anything cold. Most people should never do cold. So don't, we won't go into all that. He's covered it. Yeah. Great. Glad you, glad you liked it, Melissa. Yeah. And then anyone else, any, any further questions or yeah. do we leave it there or what? And, and if, 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 if nobody has any other questions, if you guys could, you know, type in anything here of, of, uh, did you like it? Um, what Too else long. would you like to hear Too about? Short. What else can we do to make this more valuable? I want to make sure every one of you, you know, remember what I said in the presentation, I do not want your business stuck. I do not want anybody's business stuck. If it's stuck, that's why we have the, this, this product, right? This, this marketing and business consulting product. We, you got to ask the questions. Let us help you move forward. I don't want any entrepreneur's business getting stuck here, guys. Okay. I think Thanks. we've got some good comments. Guys, appreciating all the comments. Um, any last minute, uh, anybody, anybody shy out there or didn't get a chance to ask anything? Want to hop in real quick before we go? Travis, uh, and Abby, um, raise your hand, raise your hand, uh, use the, the raise your hand button on the, uh, on the right hand side. If you want to, uh, get on verbally. Yeah. Or they can type it in too. And why, why those, why those are coming in, you know, well, we the, got the Bruce, Bruce raised his hand. Oh, got it. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> Bruce, you're on. Yep. Hi. Hey. Yeah, I've been on our storefronts now for about two months. Okay. Um, Welcome aboard. And I mainly, I mainly am on uh, Facebook, uh, myself, photography, show photography. Um, I've sold maybe eight or nine or 10 prints, mostly in the, you know, the uh, paper prints for 10 or $11 uh, range. Mm -hmm. have maybe 900 followers um i post most days i get 200 to 1200 likes on my photos i get a lot of shares and i'm and, uh, I, i'm thinking I'm wondering how but i only got about 54 email contacts huh I, I do send out maybe every every other week i'll send out a, what you guys call love letters you know explaining a photograph and what i did and all that kind of thing and people I don't get a lot of feedback on it. Um, I'm just quite not quite sure where I should be going from here. And so you're posting on Facebook. The photos are getting a ton of likes. Um, are you linking back to your website occasionally? I always, I almost uh, on my own Facebook page. I always have my my website mm -hmm. posted. And some some pages uh, they don't want you to do that. But um, yeah, I, I do post my website quite a bit. Are you we giving them a reason to, is there a reason to go there? Are you giving them a reason to go there? Uh, sometimes I do. I'll, I'll sometimes I'll say uh, prints from eight by 10 to 20 by 30 available at my website. Um, I've done that a few times. Um, I don't know if that's a good enough reason, but let me ask you this. Have you ran the con have you ran a contest yet? No, okay. I haven't done a contest. I haven't done any giveaways. That's the next about, move. I'm not quite sure about the, uh, the mechanics of that yet. That's the next move. Well, we've got the whole thing mapped out. I think, I think you're a prime uh, person to be following the art marketing calendar, like pretty closely. Because I get a lot of shares. I mean, I sometimes I get 30 shares on a print. I figure, well, geez, why should they buy it? They're getting all this stuff for free. But um, it just works. It's, so, like, the giveaway. The giveaway is going to, you got to get these people onto your email list, right? Um, right. You got to get them to opt in, but then you also want to expand that audience. 
And since you're already starting, you've got the seeds in there. You've got enough there. The giveaway is just going to amplify that. Um, and remember at the end of the giveaway, like if you probably haven't seen the whole playbook yet. It's, it's pretty genius, but at the end of the giveaway, you know, the people who opt in, who, who participate in the giveaway get a discount for like three days at 20% off or whatever you want to do. Right. And so they get this unique opportunity by participating in the giveaway to buy something, but under a scarce timeline and that works. I mean, you can see in the small wins group. People make sales from that all the time. Some people don't. It depends on what you're working with so far and how many qualified people you have in your following at that time. But sometimes the people stay on there and then you end up getting a sale from them at a different holiday down the road. Um, but I think that that's like, I would definitely hop right into the art marketing calendar just right off the bat because it sounds like you've got something to start with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. The next question is from Barb Gonzalez. Barb, I'm going to unmute you right now. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, Barb. Uh, am I supposed to do anything else here? No, nope, that's <laughs> well, it. We can hear you. Okay, great. So I've been on, I've been on Art Store Friends for a couple of years. The first year went really, really well. Last year was not so good. And now I'm really wanting to kind of revamp it. I've got tons of uh, photos up and everything else, but I feel like when I would send stuff out to all my emails and everything, I just really never got anywhere. And I spent money on Facebook ads and I spent money on giveaways and I just really feel like nothing ever went anywhere. So how can I, how can I kind of renew everything and get it, you know, revamped and, well, and going again? Well, let's, 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 let's deconstruct this. So let's talk about when things were well, tell me everything about when things were well uh what were you gee. selling <laughs> what, what was on your site to, like i want to what i'm going to do right now is i want to understand exactly what happened in that year and then what changed in the next year so um let's talk about well that. one thing right here? one thing was that i had a really hot photo that everybody shared it was from the eclipse so it got shared all over the country interesting and okay so so people came to my site and, and um, they bought that or they bought other stuff. And I think what's happening is that the the people that bought back then are not like repeat customers. So they bought then and now they're the ones who are on my email list, but they're not buying anymore. So how much of your sales in that year were like a, this eclipse? I mean, what, what is your regular subject matter? Is it is it related to the eclipse or was that just a random... Um, kind of random. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you never, so in other words, you kind of, you kind of like caught lightning in a bottle and that was gone, but you never really had traction with your other content. I mean, have you been making sales of your other stuff? You know, I just started, I, I just got, I had to do other stuff. So I, I haven't been, I have to just dedicate myself. So if I have to rededicate myself, what would be the first thing I should start doing? Well, well tell me this though. Like, uh, have you ever sold your other stuff? That's yes. not the eclipse. What, yes. what type of content is it? It's land, landscapes and wildlife and stuff, but mostly the landscapes sell. Okay. And where have you sold those? Like, have you sold them primarily in person or also online? How did, how's that broken down? Mostly online. Mostly online and where online? Well, uh, it, from the art storefronts okay like sending so people to the art website fronts. yeah okay. and from like i presume like were you following the marketing and doing social posts and then people would come back and so forth actually no you know it was more seo the ones that i sold that i didn't know were people who searched out a, a subject and came and, and bought and okay and how many of those were there roughly? Like, was it a decent amount of sales? Was it like a thousand? Not a lot, you know, I mean, um, probably half dozen, dozen maybe. Okay. Well, the, the good news about that is that you've got, you kind of got the seeds of some traction there a little bit. Like you randomly sold some content and it was good enough. Um, is it all kind of the same type of subject matter? Or is it across the board? I mean, I know you said landscape, but let's get a little more specific. Like, is it well, okay. So I, so I have different kinds of landscapes, you know, um, I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it's really beautiful up here. So I might have 
everything from waterfalls to um, forests to mountains. Okay. Um, but I also have different places as well, like Washington DC and New York, because I've done travel photography. And then I do have a section on wildlife, whether it's um, from Africa or birds. I have a lot of birds. I have flowers and I have abstracts. Those okay. are and but but what's sell, what what is making sales primarily? It it's um, Pacific Northwest stuff or you know, I wish I could say that, but it kind of goes all over the board. No way. <laughs> you know, I get people that really love birds, and so suddenly I sell a few birds, and then um my friends, I think, mostly buy the the landmark the landscape ones and um you know that's, well that's you know i was hard. saying earlier i mean this, this is uh you i mean you must be really good because this does not happen often um what doesn't happen well you, you're just you're just making sales with all sorts of different subject matter you know and it's coming from random searches uh and you know so that's that's pretty cool um but uh nor what I was saying earlier is that normally, you know, you want to like spend your time focusing in on one niche or a niche that at least you can really have an advantage on and own. I was making the example earlier, like if you're an Austin photographer, like, and you're, and you, you've got an advantage cause you live in Austin, right? Like over every other photographer that doesn't. Um, and so that's your advantage. So you know, normally you want to try to find some sort of an advantage that you have. It could be some sort of locality. It might not be. It could be something else. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then really push that. And I say that, you know, I think, I think that's an important point because I, I, I'm coming from my own perspective here um, and also in, in advising other people and just that when you start spreading yourself thin, trying to build multiple different types of audiences and constituencies, um, it can get really hard. Uh, and I prefer to go after one if I can, if I really got traction there. Otherwise, you go to, like what Pat was saying earlier, um, he was advising somebody else that like you become the brand and it's like, it's about you. And that's what, uh, it, so that's what it sounds like here. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. It might be, but you know, so what's the next move then? You know, like the, right. next, move to, the next move to me would be, um, uh, like, well, have you ever, have you ever done anything in person, Barb? Yeah, I've done some, you know, uh, gap, you know, uh, represented shows. Okay. And so I haven't gone to any art fairs or anything like that. You could do really well at those. Cause it sounds like what you have is appealing. Um, but Pat, where would you go? I would, I would start just by asking a question. So the year that was great, notwithstanding the hit with the eclipse, did you do more marketing that year than, than the year you did after the fact, or was the marketing consistent throughout? Um, I did more marketing. Yeah. You did more marketing in the, in the good year. So you, you, you knew it was that that's always, always plays a role. It sounds to me like you've got this figured out already. You just eased up on the marketing and I don't, I'm well, not even, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I, well, here's another question though. Mm -hmm. Um, since some of this stuff has been there for two years, I'm, I'm trying to bring in some new stuff. So it kind of wakes it up a little bit, but, um, on the SEO, um, should I redo some of the SEO so it gets seen again or refreshing things like that? We, we, we are, we are extremely, uh, uh, bearish on SEO just in general. I'd have to look at your stats and see, see if you're really legitimately getting SEO traffic. A lot of people think, you know, marketing has a halo effect, right? And so what happens is, is that you do something on Facebook or you do something in your email or you do something on Instagram or wherever it may be. People go home, they type your name because that's what they remember. They come to your website and they buy it and you're like, oh my gosh, there's, this is SEO. This, this SEO is amazing. It's just bringing me people out of nowhere. No, it's not. You attracted those people and some other than you, they remembered your name, they Googled you and they found you. That's what our data set shows us across the board is uh -huh. nine times out of 10 what happens. Not show me photos of waterfalls in Seattle. And they found you that way and they bought. That's not to say that can't happen. It's just really low probability, which is why we're so bearish on recommending it in the slightest. So we'd have to look at your stats to kind of get a, a more in-depth look on that. But if you're, if you're selling well, that hit aside, it sounds to me like you just, you need to stay consistent with your marketing. That's yeah. it. I have one other question. So the other question is that I am, uh, 
a columnist for the newspaper here. So I have a, a following, but it's not about photography. Ooh, Is there some way that I can kind of play off of that? Absolutely. Absolutely, um, you can. Where do they follow you? I mean, um, your well, columns, obviously, right? What's that? Your columns, obviously, right? Yeah, they. it's through the newspaper, um, both online and in print. But it's about food, so it's not about the things that I take pictures of. Um, how, what kind of what kind of relationship do we have with the uh, editor here? I mean, our, our our shameless website plugs. Is that is that above board? I think I, <laughs> I would go for it. I, I would go I can, for it. I can put it at the end, and the uh, my email that is is related to that website. So Ooh, double I, dip. Yeah. Great, great. Barb Gonzalez, world class food uh, commentator, can be seen hanging out in her photography site at. Barb Gonzalez. Perfect. Oh, I love that. Edit the, edit the tagline tomorrow, honestly, and go back and see, see if they can't do it retroactively to all the old posts. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm bribing the web guy with the By guy. the way, did you, did you no, utilize the, that, that uh, position to catch fire with this eclipse piece? Because the, the thing that's... No, this is new. Out, no, it's new. How did, how did you do that? How did you... Because I'm like, what did, can you do but, that again? Like, do you have some sort of a recipe that you followed that you got? Okay. What I did is there was the eclipse and I took the photos and it was a composite shot. And I said, okay, if, I, if people are gonna be excited about it, I gotta get it out within 24 hours of the eclipse. So I got it onto Facebook within you know, 12 or 24 hours. I created the photo and everything else and got it out there. And it just got shared. It got shared so much that I still meet people across the country who said, oh, my God, I've seen that picture, you know. Um, awesome. So that was what it was. And it just got a lot of people. Serendipity. Unfortunately, those eclipses, yeah. they don't happen every weekend. So we're going yes, to have to be more, that. <laughs> more creative to duplicate that. <laughs> so um, that, that's pretty much how it, it, it happened. That's interesting. I mean, it, it's, it still is interesting. Like... Uh, it's hard to decon. I mean, it's hard to repeat, but, um, and I don't mean that in an eclipse. I'm just thinking about like what other events, like a volcano erupting and you <laughs> take the picture of it, but there's no volcanoes there. I'm just, I'm thinking of that, but like that concept of, you know, very quickly take the picture, get news it up. Tracking. News know? tracking, it's called. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, if other people aren't doing that again, like, you know, it, it really surprises me. I, I have to say, and you guys saw this in my presentation, but, it always surprises me. I, 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 you guys are probably all sitting here on that are on this and listening to this and are going, gosh, the market is so crowded, you know? And I honestly completely disagree with that. I completely and utterly believe and disagree with that, you know? Um, and really? that sound, absolutely, absolutely. Because if there's anything that I've learned in, in business, like when you're in a market like this, I'll tell you this, everybody, like 99% of the market, is on Fine Art America, right? Is trying to do SEO and is doing all the easy things that, that you don't have to work for. That's what everybody does in every single market. They don't do anything past that. It's like they go this far. You guys all know it. Like internally, you know, you, nobody wants to do the work, right? We all don't want to do the work, you know? Um, it, 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 like that's just who we are as human beings. And the, the truth of the matter is, 99%, 99.9% of the people out there are not willing to do the work. So they're going to do all the easy things. So just think about that. What are the easy things that you can just sit back in your room? You can, you can take some photos from your iPhone, you know, and you can upload them to everything, every one of these sites, every single one of them, right? And anybody in the world can do it. And there's no, they're not discriminating at all who can do it and who can't, right? And, uh, and so obviously, those are the worst channels to be in. They are, everybody is, um, you have all the, you have maximum competition and which only means that prices go down, right? When, when I look for, like, if you go to Fine Art America and you look at um, anything, pretty much, you're going to have a ton of content to choose from there, like just a ton. And you have no way of saying, wait, my work's got value here, you know? And so it's just a, it's ultimately just a race to the bottom. And I hate that. And so what you want to do 
as, a, as an entrepreneur, because you guys are all entrepreneurs, you're running startup companies, is you always want to run where people aren't. You always want to be where nobody else is, right? Where's that? that? <laughs> that's where the advantage is. That's where the arbitrage is. And that's exactly what we, we're teaching you guys. Like, that's why Pat and I are bearish on SEO is because I, I built a business on SEO from 2003 to 2008. And it's, you know, it, it's like, this thing is, this is a tactic. What's the saying, Pat? Marketers ruin everything eventually, right? Yep. Yep. They, yep. they ruin everything eventually. And so these tactics, they don't work anymore. And, and what I love to say too is like, as soon as any discipline is like, when there's courses being taught to the public all over the country, which there are, you can go to like an SEO course downtown. When those things are happening, like anything that's been institutionalized and spread like that, it's, it's done. It's over. It's already over. Don't fall for it, right? So we're trying to help you guys where the arbitrage actually is. And that's why like, you know, it may seem like we're pushing Facebook and Instagram a lot. I mean, you know, obviously we're pushing in person just as much. That's a big topic here today. But, but you know, there is an arbitrage on Facebook and Instagram. There still is. Eventually there will not be. Eventually there will not be. As sure as the sun rises tomorrow, that will change. But rest assured, we will be moving to wherever the next things are and we will be staying on top of it. Does that make sense? Yep. Very good. Okay, Travis has raised his hands. I'm going to pivot to Travis. Travis, you're on. Uh, what's up, fellas? How are you? Hey, Travis. It sort of sounds like we're, we're running some sort of like radio show, right? Like, hey, uh, tra <laughs> hey, Travis from Buffalo. Travis, you're on. That is tra it's Travis from Brooklyn. Not Buffalo. Travis from Brooklyn. Right. You're on. <laughs> right. uh, I'm, try I'm sitting here trying to formulate how I'm going to ask my questions, but I'm just going to go ahead and break myself over the coals. and Fire it off. Good man. That's how we roll. Yes. Yeah, uh, so I've been on our storefronts for about a year. Um, I have uh, six pieces on my shop. Um, I post to Instagram on a relatively regular basis. Um, and just a little bit of background. I am. Uh, I work as a full-time uh, graphic designer slash illustrator during the day, mainly working in the fashion industry. Um, and I typically do my painting work uh, or, and, and fine art, quote unquote, fine artwork at night. Uh, another, uh, another part of the equation is that I am a full-time single father to two young boys. Mm -hmm. So my time to get all of these things done uh, is extremely yeah. limited. That being you, said, you and I were talking to the bot, right? What's that? What's that? You and I were talking to the messenger bot, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, I mean, here now. First things first. Hearing you guys talk about doing uh, doing live shows is something that uh, incredibly appeals to me. I'm pretty good talking to people. Uh, it would op actually uh, present an opportunity for me to paint live, which I think is a great draw. Um, but that being said, because of the situation that I'm in uh, with my children and whatnot, um, I don't have a support group around me. It's on K solo 100% of the time. So the show thing is off the table as of right now. That being said, um, you know, I only have probably 1,500 followers on Instagram. I, uh, I don't know. I don't really rock with Facebook that hard. So probably a few hundred followers on Facebook. Um, but obviously, when I do post on my Instagram, it goes right to my Facebook. Uh, my Instagram stories go right to my Facebook. I actually even started uh, a TikTok, and I don't know if anybody's up on TikTok, but I started posting my art on there as well. Um, that all being said, I'm at I'm at a complete standstill, and I guess my main question is, um, I feel like because I only have five or six pieces on my store, I can continue to put that stuff out there repost and repost and repost on Instagram trying to get people to come to my shop but it's, it's all extremely repetitive and you know if I only have 1500 followers they're all kind of seeing the same stuff over and over again for sure why um, do you why do you why do you have the six pieces because I was that was the first question I had too. Um, well I mean I think I think those six particular pieces are uh, it's basically mainly portraiture. There's one uh, hyper-realistic still life and uh, I actually do a bunch of calligraphy slash calligraphy type of work. Um, do you I, have I, other content? I'm sorry? you have other content? 
I do. Yeah. Yeah. And are you creating any new content right now? Well, because I spend my days clicking a mouse on a computer, I, my generating new work tends to take quite a long time for me. Well, and it's not, it's not that I, it's not that I can't, I just don't have the ability to bang a piece out in a day or two. Typically I'm whittling away in a painting for a month or two months. That's so. actually, that's actually awesome. But th I don't know if you saw, there was a post in the group uh, a couple days ago where um, somebody, one of our painters, was you know just doing progress photos and yes. I think maybe some videos and then they sure. sold the piece before it was even done or yeah. right when it was done right that's, that's amazing but, yeah. yeah but you could you should do that even though you're just slowly chipping away at your new piece like that's different content than those six pieces and then you could also post the other ones and be like hey this is a you know like you're reviving an old one or or just announce it as a new one what yeah. it doesn't matter. And I'll, yeah, I'll give it to you. Your stuff is really cool, but I definitely think you need to expand the line. You're right. You, six pieces is not enough, and especially not not changing at all in that year's time. Um, right. If you can do an expanded series of that same style that you have, I think it would do very well. I, I really enjoyed it. And I look at a lot of art. I, I think it's very good. I'm not kidding. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, um, what yeah. are your sales like just overall? Since oh, I mean, I, I think I think my first year I only sold four or five pieces. I mean, one, and mainly I don't know if, there, if you can see on the on my site. There's a I did a piece for a show which I actually took a good you know a scan of to to make prints of of a a dog fully tattooed in in, in Japanese like a Japanese bodysuit but on a dog, uh, and people love that piece. And and I you know um, I sold a bunch of prints of that. But actually, the prints that I thought were going to do well, which are my, you know, hyper-realistic oil paintings, I haven't sold one. So it's just, it's funny how it worked out that way, where, you know, I did a, a very realistic pen drawing, which took me a very long time to do, but the painting that I whittled away three months on didn't move. So, you know, it's just, you know, and ironically, you know, as far as my calligraphy, or uh, calligraphy type of stuff, you know, I do... I usually make time lapses of all those pieces because they're actually fun to watch. It's fun to, uh, people yeah, enjoy yeah. the thing come to life. I, I do time lapses. I post on my Facebook and Instagram and I actually sold, uh, I got some commissions and I sold some originals. That being said, I only have one of those pieces on my shop. So that it brings up a bigger question. Everything else. And I would focus 100% on that. That sounds on successful. That. Okay. That so that, that, really that was literally, that was my next question. I mean, do I, because it's something I love so much, do I pivot down that lane and just rock with that, you know, as opposed to doing hyper-realistic oil paintings that take months to do? Yes. I can, I can yeah. do these Yes, pieces. I'll stop you right there. Yes. Do yes. more Facebook Lives, more Instagram Lives, and, and start doing those things that are, that are selling because obviously, obviously that's working. If that's working, don't, don't overthink it. Like the market's okay. telling you, Travis, this works do more. So I'll be the market. Try this. This works. Do more. Do more of it. Um, literally right now, next one. And you got to get more stuff into your shop than any which way you slice it. So right. how to yeah. do that. Now he hearing it from you guys, I mean, that's what I needed to hear because I've been mulling this over my head for weeks or months. And I just stop mulling. Try yeah. this. This works. Do more. And follow the art marketing calendar too. Yes. And so, I mean, and that was my next thing, you know, I, and I hear you guys talking about doing giveaways and stuff like that. I haven't done that yet, but after hearing everybody talk about it and you, and all your feedback to everybody else, that's, that's the, like, the next thing on my sort of list. Yeah, of follow, you, you hear me saying it because like, guys, who do you think created the art marketing calendar? Patrick and I did, right. right? Like, and our marketing team, but this is what we created. It's, it's not, it's not there for, you know, to, to just ignore it is there. We're trying to make it easier and easier to execute on, as you guys know. Uh, right. We love to know where you guys get confused or what's wasting time so that we can build templates and do anything we can to save you guys more time, especially for people like in your spot, Travis, where, where you're, a, you know, you're a dad you're a, uh, you know, and you've got the whole load on, your, on yourself. Um, so we're trying to make it as simple as possible that we want everybody doing it because we know that it works. It works if you have traction, right? Like there are people that, have said to us like, hey, I've done everything that you've said on there, but, I could, but nothing was working. And it's like, they just didn't have traction in the first place. And so you gotta get traction first. And if you, some people actually, 
start off and their friends and family is all the traction they need and it just kind of amplifies from there. But for a lot of other people, it doesn't work that way. The friends and family are not people that buy art. They're not qualified leads. So they have zero qualified leads. They're gonna make zero sales. Right, so one, one more quick question. If I am pivoting down the lane of doing what people have been responding to, which is the calligraphy type of work, but I still have that figurative, portraiture, you know, oil painting on my page, I mean, so then I'm, I really shouldn't be pushing that stuff. I should really be leaning into the more calligraphy type of stuff and almost not, not ignore the other stuff. But I mean, does it, it doesn't even really make sense to push that because people just haven't been responding to it. Exactly. That other yes. stuff is your hobby. Your business is doing what the market is telling you. Listen right. to the market. The market doesn't uh, lie. So now do I, now with that stuff that's up there, that's not really, that hasn't moved literally at all. Am I, I would pull it down? That down? I would pull it down, but don't pull it down until you get some of this other stuff up. I, I can't have you going from six pieces to two. It's not going to work. Yeah. And, and, re and remember, like, look at, look at like, you know, Meg Knappenberger, like she, she has like bison and like all sorts of, you know, um, she's got some like some non -niche related things. stuff. The, the reality is that once you build your brand up big enough, you can start selling that other stuff again, but it's just not, it's just not where you want to focus in the short term. Yeah. Right? And, and just prioritize it, Travis. Like just make sure that it's, it's like the top content that they see, right? Like, don't right. let it get in the way of the stuff that's actually selling, you know? Got it. Okay. All right. I don't, got overthink it. It. don't overthink it too much. You're not, you're, that's not a big deal. Like I always try to tell us to people like, just get more qualified leads, right? Like get more people into your funnel, um, right. have the right, you know, focus on your right content, promote the right content and you're going to be good to go. Got it. The I appreciate it. Take care of itself. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No got problem. It. All right, I think I think that's it. I don't know if we have any other questions. Oh, oh, Larry, I see you. Larry went for the old-fashioned hand wave. I like it. I caught it. I got you. I got you. All right, you're unmuted. Go ahead, Larry. Okay, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we sure yes. can. Okay, sweet. Thanks. Well, I use the old-fashioned uh, way because I couldn't find the button that said hand wave. So um, good. maybe my, my computer's more old school than I am, and that's saying a lot. Um, so I've been with you guys for, I don't know, three or four years. Um, and, and yeah, uh, being an artist, it was, uh, it was like a hair pulling thing to get the side up and, and thank God I had a wife who isn't as stressed up about that stuff as I am. Um, but by and large, I really love the site. I, it, uh, my, my, my stuff looks good on it. Um, my art career has been, um, a late, um, kind of a late blooming thing for me, uh, career wise. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm having some success. I'm here in Austin. Uh, I'm having some success. I've got a one-man show at a gallery uh, in East Austin. I've invited you guys. I sent that to Emily, so maybe y'all oh. can get some, some art. Would love to see you. Um, but I have, uh, and, and by the way, I have not availed. I'm probably the first to admit that I've not availed myself of really. I mean, once having gotten the, the thing set up and, and posting, you know, uh, events and what have you on the site, I've really not availed myself of any of the horsepower that you guys. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. So, I'd like to say, yeah, I've been, I've been uh, busy slaving away in the studio and just ran out of time, but that would be, a, that would be not totally true as well. Anyways, um, I had one, uh, one piece, uh, a large uh, five by four by five foot painting last year that I did. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you right here. This is actually just a print. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, yeah. we can see it. But so this piece, uh, this is a print, obviously. Uh, this piece was called Valhalla. Uh, it was a, a surrealistic kind of um, version of my interpretation of what my dog's uh, afterlife was like. Uh, that's a <laughs> in, a, in a waterfall, and there's a giant uh, tennis ball-shaped orb in the sky that kind of represents that. Anyways, um, it, the the original sold last year, um, and I was very thankful for that. Um, what did you what did you sell the original for? Out of curiosity, uh, it was listed at six thousand, and and I had. I had just for a, for a Christmas special, I'd I'd knocked twenty percent off, and and someone who had been following me saw the twenty percent off and, and came in and snagged it. Love it. So, so you, you have been using some of the marketing then. I, well, I have. So I'm, yeah, um, I, I mean, I'd love to be making a whole lot more. But anyways, um, so here's the deal: when I first did this painting, um, my cousin is a member of a uh, a, a dog uh, group, a Facebook group. Um, and he, he posted it, and like over a weekend, it got like 30,000 likes and 
all these people clamoring over it. And of course, because it was on dogspotting.com, um, uh, they, they really frowned on him saying, yeah, and if you really like this, you can go to my cousin's, uh, Larry Jolly's, you know, website and buy it. Although he did do that a little bit before he got his hand slapped. Yeah. I guess my question, and, and, you know, because it was so popular and we, we fostered golden retrievers and, you know, we're all into that community as well. Um, and I've sold a few prints of this piece. In fact, it's been the majority of the prints that I've sold through um, our storefronts. I'm wondering if there's any way that you guys can help me figure out a way to really leverage this. I mean, I really resonated with the story of the woman uh, who who lucked into the um, eclipse. Uh, huh? The eclipse. The eclipse thing. And I'm like, this was my eclipse. You know, this is my 15 minutes, right? Yeah. And I'd, I'd like to extend that 15 minutes if I could by selling. Uh, prints and mouse pads and I mean I've got a little a little pop-up thing at the Arboretum right now uh, that has some of those items but man wouldn't it be nice if some of those 30,000 likes and, and we got reddit hits and it was like I, I'm not a I'm an old dude I don't do social media that much um, it, but I understand that I had like 40 or 50,000 likes and, and I did get a lot of sales from people in Seattle and all over the country who had seen it on reddit and found their way uh, through crook, crook or hook or whatever to the website and bought the prints um, from you guys. So any suggestions about how? Uh, yep, 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 yep. This is an easy one. Um, you have a defined niche. You know this thing's going to sell when it gets in front of people's eyeballs. So the easiest way to do this is interest targeting on Facebook, people that love golden retrievers. That's where I would start. And okay. it's, it's, it's likely going to... It's, it's very possible this could ROI very, very easily such that, you know, even if that person is not a particular expert at Facebook ads, you can start with a small budget and, you know, keep an eye on your stats, see what happens with the add to carts, follow up to the add to carts, um, do some hand-to-hand -hand combat there, and, and you might be able to just get away with straight cold targeting um, on Facebook to people that love golden retrievers. Because anyone that has a golden retriever knows that that dog will run until its heart stops beating to chase that damn ball. I mean, all day long. And so the Valhalla, everyone that looks at that painting, and I made it full screen so I could see it, knows instantaneously what's going on there. I know what's going on there. That dog will just keep running and running. Yeah, and running. yeah that's so, kind of what it did. Yeah, I think so, you, you connect to that. So I, I, that's where I would start. When, when you're at the Arboretum, are you selling the Golden Retriever content? I have almost exclusively Golden Retriever and dog content there. It's a very small little, a little, you know, piece of so you a have other dog. You have other dogs as well, other dog content as well? I, I have one, I have one pit bull, you know, print, uh, but that's so are you, it. So you're, are you mainly selling the golden retrievers when you're out there? Mainly. Yeah. And I, and I mean, it was up over the holidays and I sold, you know, I don't know, $1,200 worth of stuff there. I mean, and relatively small items. Um, and then it, it's still up, but it's petered out since then. Okay. So, all right, man, I, what I heard um, from you, uh, Patrick, was uh, Facebook ads and, yep. and SEOing the, the heck out of uh, the Golden Retriever deal and not going through dog spotting or Gold Ribbon Rescue. And all, no, all there's, 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 there's so many plays here. I mean, I could start rattling them off. Yes, I love the Facebook ads. Yes, I'm going to go back to that guy that moderates the group that slapped your, slapped your cousin on the arm and be like, have your cousin send a direct manager message to the manager, the moderator of the forum and be like, look, dude, you love this thing. Okay. Everybody loves this thing. Look how many shares it got. We're willing to send you a free print. All we want is a link back. We'll do a contest too, where you moderator can auction off one of these things to your group, any which way you like. All we're asking is for a link back to the website. Then I would find every single solitary dog group on the entire internet if that worked and do it again and again and again and again. Then I would go on to Instagram. And I would follow the hashtags that have everything to do with golden retrievers. I would find the accounts that are the biggest accounts in the United States. I would send a direct message via Instagram. I know I'm going fast. It's been a long day. Via Instagram to the person that moderates that account and say, look, you have a huge audience. You're always looking for good golden retriever content. I think this content is awesome. I will send you a print that you can give away to your audience. Would you be willing to do that? Yes or no? No, don't worry about it. Go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. My guess is there's probably an upwards of 50 to 100, probably even 1,000 uh, Instagram pages on Instagram that specialize in one aspect or another of golden retrievers, every kind imaginable, um, and every little aspect of it imaginable. And then after I'm done with the big macro ones, I'm going to go down to the local level. There's the California Golden Retriever Club. There's the Orange County Golden Retriever Club. There's the Austin Golden Retriever Club. 
I mean, these things are all over the place and they're having meetups. Every single solitary time I would knock the door down with, hey, you've got a great big community here. This is amazing. I tell you what, look at this, look at this ball holla. I know, right, right? They're always chasing the balls. I will let you auction this off to your community. No problem. It gives you some great content. All I'm asking in return is a link back to my website. And to be honest with you, I would maybe even start by doing that. You could get off the phone with me, pull out Instagram, type in the golden retriever hashtags, come back with a list of 30 big size accounts and send them all direct messages tonight. You can send up to 50 a day until you get your list, wrist slapped by the Instagram moderators, by the way. So send 30, 35 of them, 40 of them today and just say, hey, here's the print. I'm trying to grow it. I'll give you one for free even because normally they'd charge you to post. I'll give you one for free and you can auction one off to your community. This is a no brainer because they're constantly looking for ways to grow their Instagram community and they're constantly looking for ways to keep their followers engaged. If they can enter the best dog name uh, below and wins the, this incredible print ball holla by such and such, like done, done. Yeah, okay. Well, I still wanna to get to you on uh, bigger and other stuff because I've, um, I, I need my website to start working for me. I just did my taxes last year and, and uh, my ROI on that uh, is not making a whole lot of sense. I know you're good. I know I'm good. I, uh, like I said, I'm, I haven't even begun to, to, to turn things on. So I, we'll, we'll save that for another day though. Yep. It, it'll, it'll never be good if you don't actively do the marketing. It's like the, the fallacy is to thinking the, the, the website's going to do it, right? Like it's, it's truly a horse in a cart situation. It does not matter if the website is a Ferrari, if it's not hooked up to any horses, it's not going anywhere. The horses is the marketing. It doesn't matter if it's a Ferrari or it's a Pinto or it's a piece of wood. It's not going anywhere without the horses. Gotcha. Um, Nick, I'm at uh, Lincoln Pin Gallery on 6th Street. If you can make it down there, man. What is it called? Lincoln what? Link and Pin Gallery. Oh, okay. Got it. Small gallery on 6th Street. Um, would love to see you. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. See you. And congrats. That thing's awesome. Makes me yeah. like it. Thank I, you. I'm, so ex I'm excited for you. I think you've got a lot of potential. You just got to get out there and do exact. I don't have to say anything else. Just do exactly what Pat said and just follow what I'm saying about collect the leads everywhere you are going, right? Because that's your digital strategy. Like you're going to make sales and, and do everything you can like everywhere else, but you got to collect the email addresses everywhere you are, as many, as many, as many, as many as you can. Because with that, then you apply that into the art marketing calendar, everything we're telling you to do in there. And that's going to close people. That's going to close the sales eventually. It's going to grow your audience. It's going to amplify the whole thing but you've got to collect the qualified leads. You've got to find a way to do that. And that, that, that's, it's like, we were just talking to Abby a few minutes ago about the gallery. And I'm like, you got like, when I was telling her, you know, it, people are coming in the business, any business has got to collect leads. You got to collect qualified leads. And if you're not doing that, you have to stop doing whatever you're doing and, and go do something else and then do something else and do something else until you find a faucet of qualified leads that's coming into you. Right. And a faucet could be like, I use that terminology to say, like, if you do a show and every time you do that show, it's get generating use a couple of sales and like 50 emails on your list of qualified leads. That's a little faucet that you got there. Maybe you can do some other shows. Maybe it's doing some, you know, obviously the Facebook ads that Pat's talking about, maybe the Instagram followers or these groups, right? Every one of those are individual faucets that can bring you qualified leads. So you want to get every email address you possibly can while you're obviously trying to make sales, you know, as the first priority. Right. Where do I, where do I find the art marketing calendar? Um, it, it's, it, it, when you're logged into art storefronts and you're working on your site on the very top bar, there's a, there's a, uh, it says, uh, marketing resources hover over that. Okay. And it's all right there. There's, it'll say art marketing calendar. You just click on it. It'll take you right to it. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. You got it. All right. No yeah. problem. All right. Bye. I think that's it. I think we've exhausted all the questions. Yeah, well, let, let's, let's wrap it up anyways, because it's getting late. Um, and then we'll, we'll save anybody else for the next time. Doesn't look like any hands are raised. We still have 30 uh, participants. Thanks, everyone, for sticking through that with us. Had no idea where that would go. It was actually really fun. I hoped it was helpful. Um, I certainly had fun. No I'm ex yeah, there. me too. I'm excited, you know, for all of you guys. I'm, I'm, we're going to be doing this. You know, I think this last part is the part that we'll be doing more frequently maybe on a, on a weekly basis, maybe on a monthly basis. We'll figure that out. We'll, we'll talk to you guys. You guys give us some feedback um, and, you know, work on these things and then let's, let's keep working, right? Like 
You're going to like something that's really important to know guys when you're growing a business. And this is why this gets to the point of why I created the art storefronts, this product um, is when you're at zero in sales and you're trying to get to like traction, you're going to get stuck. Like you got to try different things and then, oh my gosh, you get some traction, right? But then you get to like $10,000 in sales and then everything just stops again. And you're going, oh my gosh, what do I do? Like I just stopped again. And then, you know, you, you, you got to get some advice. You got to, you got to figure out what's going on there because maybe one of the channels that you have working, one of the marketing channels that's been delivering for you, one of your faucets, like you can't push it any further. Like it's the last show you can do, or it's something else. And you've got to move to the next level. You kind of get stuck there. Well, you know, you're going to probably get stuck at a hundred thousand dollars in sales. It's the same problem. Right. And then you're, you're like, how do I get to 500,000 or a million dollars? It, it never ends guys working on a business. Like it, it's, it's never just, you try one thing and then all of a sudden, you know, like the, the, the C parts and you just walk right through it and it's like, Ooh, this is amazing. Never works that way. It doesn't matter what level you're at. So we're here to help you work on the business, no matter where you're at. I don't want you guys getting stuck at all. So just keep that in your minds. Keep coming back to these things. Let's keep working through your problems and let's, uh, let's get you moving forward. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.